Are you getting yourself ready for our show? Hey guys, it's another Tuesday for you. We got uh, Jigs and Bigs. Jigs and Bigs is happening. Another week. I can't believe the consistency of the show, man. We just keep delivering banger after banger after banger. And we've got a good one for you today. Uh, Tropical Storm Henri has uh, reared its ugly head in the Northeast. We're going to talk about what we've been dealing with lately because we've been getting hammered up here. We're going to go ahead and talk about that. Uh, I had a little bit of an adventure yesterday. Didn't get out and fish too much over the weekend, but I'm going to share what happened. I did get sent seaworthy. That's going to that that's something worth talking about. I had a couple outings this weekend. One way more fruitful than the other. Sean the Fisherman has uh, some tales of, of getting ahead of this storm that uh, he's going to go ahead and talk about. We've got couple of things that we want to let you know about that might be coming down the pipe sooner rather than later um of course we have uh in 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 our just the tip segment this week we're doing a segment that is about well this is for the beginner if you're just about to go and get started and you you, you've maybe heard this show or you watch some youtube videos from some creators out there you want to get started what do you need to actually get started with bass fishing we're going to let you know how that works out and we have the granddaddy of all fuck that guy segments today. Uh, I got to tell you, this one made my blood boil just yesterday, and I knew exactly how it was going to go down. Uh, and 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 the internet did not uh, miss when it came to uh, letting letting it uh, be known whether they agree or not. Lots of good stuff coming up, guys. We have so much more to talk about. Go ahead, get yourself something uh, delicious to drink. We'll get uh, we'll get back to it right about right about now. Look at that, everybody. Jig heads are rolling in. We got Nelson saying, what's up? How you doing, boss? understand you had yourself a good day today, too. Jerry Howes jumping in says, hello, Jerry. Good to have you, buddy. Uh, we have, uh, it, it's been good, man. It's been a pretty decent week. I, I have to admit, um, a, a busy week. Probably the busiest week I've had in a, a, like a, about 18 months, realistically. Like, super busy. <coughs> Five regularly scheduled trivia events plus two events that i worked over the weekend um it was man today was rough sean how are you man how's things i'm feeling much better from last week thank you i that's good i uh i got over that cold and it's been a it's been a quiet week for me where i have used a liberal application of ice packs on my lower back for most of the week i've had some major problems Mm -hmm. where i'm getting fucking old apparently it comes with the territory it does it sucks man yeah, it, it so I, w- I was I was sent couchworthy, and I I understand you were sent seaworthy. I, I was sent seaworthy, yeah. But bef- <laughs> but actually, before we get into the in, into the details there, because I, I shared some information. We'll, we'll get to all this, but I did share a little bit of information about this. This was one of the biggest nightmare endeavors I've ever had to deal with. Like it was insane. Um, we'll get to that in a second, but I do want to mention, I, I periodically, I recorded another podcast today as well. I recorded an episode of trivial and I had to mute the hell out of that microphone too, because I am still hacking like crazy. I genuinely do think that what I have going on is some type of an allergy thing. You think so? I do. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, we ended up with my wife got that cold too. We, yep. we ended up being a cold for us. I'm on the, I'm I'm coughing a little bit still, but not like this past week. I mean, I've talked with her about it and a couple other people. Yep. I mean, since the COVID decade began. Yeah. We we haven't gotten sick. Yeah. Not and not this, much. Not much. Yeah, this, I, I had one little, uh, like three or four day stretch. The same thing it was like a head cold. But this is this usually happens to me a couple times a year. And it's yeah, usually I'll, starts with like allergies where like my head's just all congested and then it just moves into my chest. Yeah. We, we, you know, I'll get a cold once or twice a year, but this one was, this was brutal. Yeah. I mean, for not having been sick for two years, it was like my body had to readjust to actually getting sick. And it was so weird that it seemed like instead of the symptoms altogether lasting for four or five mm. days, it was one symptom would go for one day yeah. and then it, it would come back two days later. And then another day I would just have a headache. It was it was so bizarre 
I, I don't really know how to describe it. And I did my usual, you know, my way of attacking this with just shitloads of Gatorade and water. Yep. And, it, you know, I got through it in about a week, but it was pretty brutal. And I did, just to be sure, I did go to get, you know, a COVID check and it came up negative. So yeah. I don't know. It just sucked. Getting used to being sick every now and again was was nasty. We did the same thing. We got we got tests back and they all came back negative because we're like, I wonder, I wonder. You know, and my, my, my wife has been having to do... Uh, has has been uh, having to swab at uh, some of the spots where she works because they've got cases coming in, and they're you know they they have to go a certain amount of time with uh, you know zero positives before they can stop testing, and then they mm-hmm. start up the mandatory testing again once like somebody comes in and they're just like oh I got to call out for whatever, it's just it's it's craziness so not not fun at all. You just no, had to cough right there so. I, I want to go ahead and, and, and kind of explain what the hell happened. We'll get we'll get to the fishing in a minute, but I want to go over this weekend and the reason why I didn't fish. This is crazy, okay? Like I said, I recorded an, another podcast earlier today. Um, I'm relaunching like the original solo Bobby Rose Beef podcast called Trivial, uh, and it's been a long time since I did anything with that. It was actually starting to get some some decent um, momentum, and it was you know really good. Like I had a nice sort of rapport where I would, you know, play games with guests and we'd talk and have interviews and I try to add different elements here and there. And then, you know, COVID happened and it just got crazy to go ahead and do it. I'll I'll, I'll be honest with you. If it wasn't for Jigs and Bigs, this whole like virtual podcast thing probably never even would have come to mind because that show was so hyper-focused on local. So what I've, I've been wanting to go and do something else with this. And I I think I figured out what I'm going to do is just kind of like, Everything else I have going on, be it trivia, business, marketing, social media, um, I- anything, internet culture, mo- uh, music, like you name it, I'm basically going to lump over there and just kind of have some fun with. And, and and you and I had 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 a conversation about having you on there to kind of just get like kind of geeky. And my plan is to sort of separate um, – the different episodes by specific title. Like today, I had uh, recorded an episode that's called um, Trivia Hosts Talking About Stuff. And this is because, you know, I host this game called Speed Quizzing, and there's a a pretty solid network of hosts that are out there around the world. And I I spoke with a a guy named Nathan Baker, who is from the Finger Lakes region in upstate New York. He has a a multi-op trivia company. And uh, just similar to what I do, does weddings and all kinds of stuff. And we had a good conversation, but... I asked him in there, I said, what is your most like nightmarish trivia story? Like you just knew it was like the show from hell. And he gave me his answer. You guys can can listen to that to figure out what that was. And I'm just going to share mine with you guys is mine happened last night. And it was I had uh, gotten a call on Friday about a booking for a 35th birthday party for um, this woman's husband. And I'm thinking, okay, 35. They're looking to do a trivia night. Okay, sounds good. The, the time that they were going, I guess they were leaving this boat, uh, leaving from this port in Quincy, and they were getting on this 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 ship and going out for four hours. They were getting they were leaving at six and they were set to return at ten. Um, a four hour tour, if you will. Um, I know that was corny. That was corny. Lame, fucking lame. Yeah, it was. So I explained to her that I already had a booking. I had to work at uh, a a local college for one of their uh, new students, open houses. And I, you know, was there all day. I said I was going to be there until about five, uh, about five or five thirty, and that if uh, she wanted to do this, wanted to have me bring the game show onto the onto the boat, she we'd have to make arrangements. So I said, talk to the captain and see if uh, it works out time-wise and schedule-wise to loop back around for about 8 o'clock. Because at that point, I can get on the boat, and we can go out and do the game. We'll have two hours left to you know get all that in. I'll be able to get set up, do the game, entertain, and then wrap it up, and we'll be good to go. And she's like, I think we can do that. Let me talk to the captain. She gets right back to me, says, yep, he's he's down. Let's do it. So we set everything up, and you know we confirm everything. I am I leave my event, and I'm headed out that way. I get a text from the, the the contact, and she says, give me a text when you're nearby. Now, I actually made great time there. I actually arrived at 7 p.m. I figured I was going to be there about 7, 7.30. I arrived about 7 p.m. because I was able to get right out of that first event. So big shout out and thank you, too, by the way, to uh, Brian Nix. Appreciate that. 
Um, so I was able to get right out to that next event. It was great. Um, I, this is the point where I knew something was up. So I, I call the contact and I tell her, I'm like, I'm here and I have a bunch of equipment with me. I had my standard, you know, Sean, the stuff I use for trivia, like you'd see normally every night I have, you know, a high performance loudspeaker. I have all my stuff in one road case, all on a cart. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to just roll right in. So I also brought with me that smaller battery powered PA, right? A uh, wired microphone. And that, that actually was the same system that we used for the boats and scroats challenge with that little shelf where I could put my laptop. Yeah. So what I had done was I took all of that, put it together. And I brought my laptop with all the odds and ends all in that bag. I took this one little cart that they had at the marina. What I did is I messaged, I, I, I called and like I said, this is where I knew it all went wrong. I said, you know, what makes more sense? Should I bring a more compact, you know, uh, sit, uh, set up or, or, or bring uh, the larger one, the larger one I could set up much quicker. And she was like, bring them both. And I'm like, she's wasted. She's, she's hammered. <laughs> I'm like, I got a feeling because that this isn't that kind of a question. Bring it all. No, we're talking about limited space here. So I also had no idea what this boat was all about. Um, so I, I anyway, I get over to uh, to my area. I set up all my stuff and I make the decision. I'm going to go through everything and bring as compact of a system as I can. And boy, am I glad that I did. So I roll everything out onto the onto the dock. They send somebody over to meet me so I know which ship to go to. I, I go over there, and this is basically, um, a, a, it's a fishing boat is what it is. But uh, it's got a nice cabin, a really good-sized cabin in there. And they had a blackjack dealer in there, so they were out playing cards for the first two hours. And then they came back, and they had me set up on the fishing platform in the back, which is great. I was kind of like right at home. The only thing is, is that, this um in in a fishing boat of this size there is normally like a good size like a fight chair that's in there right and instead it was like a little cocktail table in its place complete with weenies Uh, weenie free very important detail yeah weenie free actually now that i mentioned it um it was it was chock full of cake uh later in the evening but anyway so we go we we get to uh we 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 uh, we get onto the high seas and uh, we're on our way. Everything's great. We're having a great time. This is fantastic. Everybody's happy. Oh my god! So I'm setting up. They go in to play one more round of blackjack. Everything's cool. They are hammered. Like I've never really seen. This is like 3 a.m. level, and it was 8 p.m. Just keep that in in, in a frame of reference, okay? And it's a trivia night, okay? Like sounds, sounds like a fucking party. <laughs> yeah. So I show I, I'm I'm there. I'm set up. I finally now I had told her initially. I said to kind of conserve time. I'm going to send you uh, a list of the directions in order to get connected. The app everybody's going to need to download and everything because I knew service was not going to be super easy to come by once we're on the water. You know, down, downloading that app and getting all set up. Luckily, they are all able to do it, but nobody did this in advance, of course. So I'm, I'm helping people get set up. And of course, they're just sloppy drunk. And they're like, here, do this for me. Do this for me. Oh, we got to do such and such. So I, I finally get everybody up and ready. And it's one of these situations where like, they almost forgot that I was hosting the game. And they were just constantly interrupting everything with stupid questions, trash talking one another. Like, I mean, was it fun? Sure. But it wasn't effective. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, there was just, I was doing more laughing and making fun of them than anything else. You know, and you know how like you go see a comedian and there might be a heckler in the audience and that comedian has to put that heckler in line and kind of like, you know, wrangle them in. So I had to do that a number of times (sighs) this whole time. I'm freaking out. I'm like, I got to get through this game and I got to make sure that they have a good time because at last, like I've got a really good record. Nobody's ever come back and said like, Hey, that sucked. You know, we want our money back or whatever. Nobody's ever done that. So I'm like, this is crazy. You know, I got to, I got to, I got to put this, I got to make this work. So I pulled out Old Faithful. Music round. Songs that, in, in, that entice drunk girls. Every, everybody knows these songs. Well, of course, there's one team there that there's two women that know each and every one of those songs. And that's what I was banking on. But all they were doing was just grabbing a random lyric and considering that to be the name. So for instance... I, I played the song Get Low from Lil John because that excites drunk girls. 
and uh, they called it from the windows to the wall. Were they upset when you told them they were wrong? The highly. They were convinced that I was mistaken. And then, you know, I had to re-explain, like, you guys are taking these guesses and you're losing points. It was like, we'll go on. So we got through everything. Everything's cool. You know, we got we get through the end of the game. Um, I, as we get to the last few questions, they had they had somebody that was there that was, I think, kind of just playing, like, the boat mom. You know, like, um, cleaning up after them, keeping them on some kind of a time schedule. She comes up to me and, and whispers in my ear, and she's like, in seven minutes, we're going to do cake. I said, beautiful. I did three more questions. I read the scores. I did the bonus question. I read the final scores. Congratulated the winner. Everybody's good. Cake happened, okay? And then you drop the life, <laughs> one of those life, uh, what are the lifeboats and fucking paddled out of there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just, I was, I was out. Done. Um, so everything went pretty well, you know, for the for the most part, as far as the game was. Cake came out. Everybody's having a good time. They decide they're going to go back. No, no, no. They didn't go back in and play cards. Instead, out come these fireworks. On a boat. Smart. Not only were these fireworks, but they have these fireworks in place and flares. And they're just like ripping stuff all around. There's one guy there who is just so like he was he was so drunk, Sean. He was like uh, like one more shot, he would have been brain dead. Like you know what I mean? Uh, he was so we're talking we're talking Sean the Fisherman nineteen ninety eight drunk? <sighs> Probably worse. Like I'm just saying that's some chickabee shit right there. You know what I mean? Sean, Sean the Fisherman nineteen eight ninety eight. That's general standard for you've had too much. Any night like this guy was at Denny's, but he was sleeping in his moons over a Miami, you know what I mean? 98, yeah. Sean, got it. Okay, so <laughs> that level. He has a flare. Now, I don't know that this yeah, is what's a... what's the fucking flare guns? No, no, not a flare gun, a flare. Like, you just light it, and you drop it, and you leave it. No, this guy a was... fucking road flare? Yeah, a road flare. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, and he's standing there, and he points it right at this dude that's right in front of me, and I grab the dude immediately, and I'm like, you're a meat shield. I'm like, I, <laughs> this is not in my contract. Like, no, 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 no. <sighs> So I'm like, and he's like, whoa, what are you doing? I'm like, dude, I'm like, trust me. I go, all all this stuff here that I have with me is way worth way more than you are. (laughs) I'm like, done deal. So they're all, well, the captain comes down from the deck and he goes straight up angry father. Like when his kids are having a sleepover and it's 3.30 in the morning and no one's gone to fuck to bed yet, he lost his shit on this group of people. Keep in mind, there was only 10 guests. That's it. That was the whole party. So he lost his freaking mind. He's like, are you freaking kidding me? He's like, he's like, you guys are out here with flares. He goes, what are we supposed to do? Just drop them in the water. He's like, get rid of them. He's like, the Coast Guard comes over here and I get sighted. He's like, anything happens and it's on you. He's like, anything. You know, and so we're, we're going on. So uh, anyway, they all get wrangled back into the cabin. Like they, they get sent to their room and they play some more blackjack and the shots are flowing. And then I start having a conversation with the first mate and she's telling me about how they have this policy that they don't typically allow hard liquor on board. And either, and I, I forget exactly what the details were, but either it, they, it had gotten snuck on or they had made an exception and now we're regretting it. Um, so what, what the, this, uh, this policy started about a year ago when they had a group who would come on and they were all just pissed drunk and just acting like assholes. And that fight chair I mentioned, they broke it and wow. they threw it overboard. And then at I, least they, yeah. at least they didn't have road flares. <laughs> no, they didn't have road flares at night that would have drawn tons of attention from Coast Guard or even you know I mean I know even the police have boats on the water. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like it's just like it's it's crazy, man. You know, like you just can't do that shit. And uh, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. So we're having this conversation and she's like, and and I I go into the, the, I don't know why, but I went into the the cabin to see what was going on. And when I say that they had brought booze on, there were 10 people there. There was enough booze on this table to do a full bar for a hundred person crowd. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. I was like, are you serious? So I'm like, I don't even want to be in the parking lot with these people when they leave, you know? So as soon as we got up to the dock, everything that I needed was right up against the side of the boat. As soon as they tied us off, I threw everything overboard and I just jumped on, grabbed a cart and hightailed it out. I was like, I got paid. We're good to go. I did check in with the contact and I was like, 
you had a great time, right? I was like, everybody seemed to be having a good time. As a matter of fact, the birthday boy, and this is really the only one that matters. The birthday boy was like, that was awesome. I had a great time. And what's really weird, and I'll show you pictures. Um, I don't I don't have pictures handy to be able to show you. I did take a selfie with the guy because he reminds me so much of a dude that I was in a band with in like the early, early 2000s. It was frightening. I, I even told him, I was like, dude, I got to tell you, I was in a band with this dude that is your doppelganger. A hundred percent. He's 10 years. He's old, more than 10 years older than he is. But I'm like, he is a hundred percent your doppelganger, especially like, cause he had long hair. I was like, back then I was like, oh yeah. So I show him this picture and he was like, that is badass. That picture. Can you send me that? That's awesome. I was like, well, yeah, sure. But let me get a selfie with you so I can send it to him. And he's like, all right, cool. I sent it to us and all the other guys in the band. And I got phone calls on the ride home. They're just like, did you see Richie out in Boston? When did he grow his hair back? I'm like, that was not Richie. <laughs> I'm like that was not Richie at all. That that was that was a dude named Neil who apparently loves Halo, nerds, and uh, wants to learn how to fly helicopters and play guitar. I only know this because these were some of the trivia questions that we had written into the quiz. <laughs> he want he wants to do that, but right now he's in a fucking Coast Guard jail for road flares. <laughs> <laughs> he's got Get alcohol poisoning he's a betty ford oh I, my god I, I will say this what what's odd was like as everybody was like let's do a round of shots let's do a round of shots and he was like half a shot to the girl who was pouring he's like i'll have half a shot like he was the only one that was trying to be slightly and i, I say this like slightly responsible with what he was drinking, like slightly. So, I mean, it was just, dude, it was just banana. So I share this with Nathan. I get his story, which is is a pretty good one. And, I mean, it was just crazy. Because I've, I've probably hosted like 2,500 trivia events. No kidding. Like probably that many in the last six years. I mean, I host that often. I, I have full confidence. Like I'm hosting in front of 300 uh, high, sc uh, high school, uh, college freshmen on Saturday uh, for this one huge event, and that's going to be a piece of cake. You know, they're not going to be hammered. <laughs> you know, not to that degree. That to start <laughs> to start. Um, I don't want to make too much judgment, but you know, I was just. Well, like, you're, you're going to have a certain degree of them that are really stone. They are college freshmen. You know. It's yeah, but you know what? It's Smith. Oh. Yeah, you're not. No, you're not going to have. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. It's Smith, mm. so they're they're generally pretty well behaved. You yeah, know, yeah, they're generally pretty well behaved. So that was, I mean, I did. It was my first time ever doing trivia, doing speed quizzing out on the salt. Like that was the first time ever. Have I ever done anything on freshwater? No, I don't think I have either. So on water at all, like not on land, that was pretty amazing. So I was like, that's eh, pretty, pretty cool way to end the week, even though it wasn't like super exciting fishing wise or anything like that. It was a lot of fun, you know. Awesome. Yeah, good stuff. And then I did fish a little bit, but uh, my fishing was limited to two days. I had gotten together with uh, the one and only uh, Ellie, Ellie in the Wild, and uh, we hit up. Uh, <laughs> but what was we hit up? Uh, not Mount Wachusett, Wachusett Reservoir. And uh, once again, I totally got outfished. Um, she upsized the smallmouth she caught from the last time she was there. I caught nothing. Um, and it was crazy. We pull up. So there's there's supposedly uh, at Wachusett, there's no uh, boats. It's bank fishing, bank access only. Yep. And we pull up and there's a truck with a boat trailer pulled right up against the water. And I'm like, this is crazy. Well, we saw the guys coming back out. They were doing some kind of maintenance, I think, like with the dam or something like that. So I was like, oh, okay, all right. I was just, I, I told her, I was like, I wonder if we're going to see some drama. Like, what the hell happened? You know, like, this is kind of crazy. Uh, it was it was fun, though. You know, we had, we had a good time. Um, I always like getting skunked. And <laughs> 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 so fast forward 24 hours. And I was at home getting prepped for trivia, and I, I had some running around I had to do. Did I? Was that the day I think I went to the barber? I think I did. I think I went to the barber, and I came back, uh, hung out with the family for a little bit, and I was just like, you know, I'm going to leave a little bit early for, for trivia. I'm going to go and, and wet a line. So I went and I fished the uh, new Smalley factory that I've been working here in Holyoke, and uh, no dice there. I worked that as efficiently as I could, and I made the, the decision to move on to that spot that you and I had talked about before. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. Were yep. there any masturbating homeless people this trip? None. Although well, you really, you really lost out. There. I really did. I really did. Although there was, um, I did give a couple of jigs and big stickers to uh, a bunch of kids that were there with their mom or grandmother, like you know, just kind of going for a walk. I think they're going to playground, and they come by, and they're like, you know, in that part of town you don't see fishermen just chilling. You know, it just doesn't happen that way. <clears throat> so I'm doing my thing. Um, you know, they're asking me all these questions. They see the jig on my line and they're like, what is that? Oh, is that a fish? And I'm like, no, that's just the bait. <laughs> you know, that's what, I, this is the bait. So I hooked them up with some stickers and, you know, I, I don't, who knows if they're, if they're ever going to have an interest in fishing or something, who knows? They might be listening to this. They might be like, wow, I don't ever want to do trivia on a boat with this asshole. He's not going to let me drink my ass off. Um, or, or mom, I need road flares. Mom, I need road flares. <laughs> So they go out and they're doing doing their and and I decide at, or what am I talking about? They didn't go anywhere. They left and they they did their thing. I had had fished this one area as efficiently as I could, fished every single angle, and I said, you know, they're not biting here. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Let's move on. So I jump in the car and I hit up an entirely different body of water um, on my way toward uh, Nathan Bills, and I stop off and I think it was once I got bit, I got bit over and over and over again. I managed to catch three, uh, which was great. Two large mouth and a small mouth right in the middle. All of them right around in that 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 14, 15 inch range. Um, I was pretty impressed. I was, I was really impressed with how well it, it produced over there. And all of them on the same bait, all of them on that divine swim jig from Sixth Sense. I did uh, go up to a three eighths. I had been throwing a quarter previously. I upped that size. Where was I fishing where I needed because the depth? I think I upped it actually when I was at Wachusett because where we were, there was pretty deep. So I was like, I want to go a little bit heavier. Not nothing crazy, you know, nothing, nothing insane. But what I decided to do was I'd pop this guy on and uh, see how it worked. And I think it's kind of like a nice place to be three eights it works out really good and uh and that was it for me i caught a few had had the game of my life on uh wednesday like amazing i mean it's amazing you get those like i caught a fish endorphins and i don't care what you do for work it's a better day yeah. you know like it's i can definitely see if i still worked a nine to five i a hundred percent would especially where i where i used to work i would go back there and fish the river back there you know, a hundred percent go get three hours in, then go into work, work, and then maybe fish for a couple hours before I come home. You and know, that's, that's right where the, uh, Connecticut and Chicopee river meet. Too. Yes, it is. We've got a few spots to play with right there. Yeah. There's a lot that I can fool around with there. And in early on when I, when I started fishing, I did experiment over there. I never really had any great luck, but there's, there's plenty of spots, yep. you know, <clears throat> And I have I have since fished in some of those spots and had luck, but nothing along the big river. Hmm. What else do I have? Yeah, that about sums up my week for the most part. Nice. Yeah. Uh, today I did something that I haven't done in eight years or nine years. Eight years. Eight years. Yeah, about eight years. What's that? <clears throat> I fished a tropical storm. <laughs> okay. Nice. So... The last time I looked at my records, I remember making a note on it the last time it happened because the weather was so outlandish. In 2013, Tropical Storm Andrea rolled through Western Mass, and I was out with, who, believe it or not, Nelson back then. And oh, you got to be kidding me. Dan, yeah, we were all out. Um, the last time we fished Dark Brook Reservoir uh, out in Auburn, but... It was the like the swampy arm of it that really is only kind of connected by a stream. Gotcha. So it's almost like it's almost like a separate body of water. Yep. And we had fished that, and that was actually during our. Um, I had it noted as one of our little friendly tournament trail stops that we were doing for years before, you know, organization came in and into our fishing, and we you know were with MAKB or yep. whoever else. So that was uh, that was fun. But today, uh, Nelson and I got out. We got up real early. And we went out to pre-fish uh, Cheshire Reservoir, where Saturday's Massachusetts Kayak Bassing Western mm -hmm. Division Trail Stop number six will take place. Neither of us had fished there before. And, uh, you know, we go out. And Nelson and I are right now, um, and this always, again, this always looks bad for this to happen to directors, but we're number one and number two for Angler <laughs> of the Year. And, um, you know, we're friends, but we're competitive. 
Yeah, and oh, of if course. he beats me, and if he beats me for Angler of the Year, you know I'll never forgive him. And <laughs> I know it's a two way street. True. <laughs> and then we'll be friends again next year. We'll do it all over again. But um, no, we went out there and gave it a, gave it a shot. And plus, the big thing with with us going out to check that out is um, this this place has a little bit of how do I put this? It's got some ground rules set up by the uh, the town authorities that they want us to follow. So we had to go out there and just kind of run through 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 a few things, and make sure that that the tournament description was up to snuff, and that they require you know, that you like wear ladle holes in and all that. Yeah, well, now there's an area that we you would think that wouldn't be an issue for portage, and it really is. So we have to cover that, and I wanted to make sure we were set on gotcha. places anglers could go and any landmarks or signs or anything that would help us distinguish that, et cetera. So we were out there not only pre-fishing, but making sure that, you know, we're abiding by the rules and hopefully get invited or, you know, or, or allowed to go back next year. Mm -hmm. So we, we did that. We went out there and, uh, you know, we got on them, we got, we fucking got on them. I'll tell you what. So I've, I've been having a really rough go of this, uh, this, this August and the end of July and it's mm -hmm. not been, I've not, I've not really done well. Um, I've had a lot of small fish and it's just been over and over again, no matter where I am. And that happens, man. You get in a rut sometimes. It, yeah. And, um, comes at territory. Yep. So we went out and I ended up today because of the, not only I, my guess is the moon phase plus this horrific weather that came through. I ended up with two dozen fish, 19 of which were largemouth. So it's not bad. Yeah, a ton of nibblers, but there was yeah. one good fish thrown in there. Nelson was on the same. You know, we mm -hmm. chances are the, the tough thing is see, we talk about this. We, we talked about this a few weeks ago or whatever, but the tough thing with pre fishing is if you only have a certain amount of available time to go pre fish, you're at the mercy of whatever weather elements are out there. Oh, or whatever, definitely. You know? And I am not expecting a Saturday. tropical storm. Yeah. A tropical storm with a full moon. So, like, what information can you take out of that? It's like, well, exactly. I'm, I'm probably not going to catch two dozen nibblers, you know what I mean, and one good one thrown in there or whatever. But I got to look at the bottom. I got to see the depths, mm -hmm. which is good because um, Nelson and I both have Garmin systems, and for whatever reason, this body of water was way off with their depths from a Garmin system, way off. And uh, we noted that. I said, was well, yours way off too? He said, yeah. So – um, yeah, it was a learning experience. We got out there, nice little lake up in the mountains and caught some fish, got back on the horse. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. good. You know, and as, as the rain started moving in really where the, the rain started opening up on us. So the sky started opening up on us. Um, that Northwest corner of the state really didn't get much of the tropical storm until later. Mm. My understanding was I talked to my wife and she said it was raining the whole morning and we didn't even see much rain until you know, 11 o'clock right before it opened up, there were two bass boats that were coming in off the water. And one of them was going slowly by Nelson. I hear one of the guys on it yell, Holy shit. And I look up and I don't see anything going on. I'm like, Oh, that was weird. I wonder what happened. They take off. And Nelson tells me, do you hear that guy yelling? I said, yeah. He goes like, what was that about? He said, I was working some top water and about a two foot long pike jumped three or four feet out of the water to try and murder whatever lure Nelson was using. No way. And they all saw it just go completely airborne. And that's when the guy yelled, holy shit. I said, yeah, a pike will do that. And I got over there and that was no more than a foot and a half of water. And there was a big pike just hanging out in there. No yeah. kidding. So that was fun. That's yep. cool. But um, yeah, so our recon and pre-fishing mission went well, I guess. We'll see what happens Saturday. And yeah. That's awesome. Up. No, that's that that's awesome, man. Sounds like sounds like it was a good time. How everything uh as far as that you you're talking about for uh, portage. Um what what's 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 the deal with that over there? Oh yeah. So there's a couple of there's a couple of basins. There's uh, a north, a middle, and a south. The south is completely weed choked, so that's out of bounds. But there's a road in between the middle and the north basin. And it's only, you know, I don't know, a hundred feet between the two water bodies. Gotcha. But there's a, there's a stretch of land on the north side of this road on the north basin, the, mm -hmm. the southernmost part of the north basin, that actually has this, I don't know, right, delegated or whatever, des, de, not delegated, designated, designated for. Thank you. I you know I just woke up. Give me a break. <laughs> designated for shore fishing area. Yep. And there's a little park there, and there it looks well 
you know, the, the lawn is manicured. <laughs> well taken care of. There you go. And the town and uh, the police chief said, that's great. We don't want kayaks getting dragged across. Yeah, that. they don't so, want to mess anything up. We got you. Yeah, so, so we're going to allow people to fish both. They can, at eight hours, you want to fish both? Great. But you have to get in your truck or vehicle, move your boat from one from ramp to ramp. And one to the other. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some strategy there. If you're having a bad time at one one of the, the basins, do you want to waste time and yeah. go to the other? You know, that kind of plays into something that I posted today on Instagram on the Jigs and Migs account. And it was, uh, I forget the account that I actually had had pulled this from, but uh, I had reposted it. And it was basically, would you rather type question, would you rather fish one big lake all day long or would you rather pond hop, you know, all day long? And for me, I answered it as honestly as I could. I was like, really, if I'm going to take the effort and grab the kayak or, you know, if when I when I when I'm at the point when I have a boat and I'm taking that out, I want to go to the biggest lake I can, you know, and I want to just plant myself there for the day because the last thing I want to do is rig everything back up on a trailer to go elsewhere, you know, and, and find another spot. If I'm pond hop, or if I'm bank fishing, though. I want a pond hop for sure, you know, and I rather when I'm pond hopping, I rather know a day ahead what the route is for where I'm planning on going so that I can just stick to a plan and go for it. And that way I'm not wasting the time while I'm fishing, saying, looking at my phone, like, oh, what's juicy nearby? I I understand sometimes that has to happen. And sometimes you pull an audible and you got to go for it. But um, there's one of those things where it's nice to kind of have a plan. But a lot of the people agree, although there were many that were just like big lake, big lake, big lake. Did you see my answer to that? I I don't know if I saw yours. All I did was repost it or I shared it and I didn't. I didn't answer the question. I put C. I'd rather post up at a small pond. I'd yeah. rather go to a small pond and dissect the shit out of it. You know? True. Yeah. Yeah, I can get that. We got some comments jumping in here. Jerry says, same way Saturday, nibblers and one good one. Bunch of nibblers in this town. Bunch of nibblers. freaking nibblers. Nibblers. But, I mean, at least you know that the population is there, you know? And, I mean... Do you think that what you caught today over there is a good representation of what's actually in there? Uh, is that too hard to say? Well, you know, I, I no, because I tend, my tendency around full moons is to catch nibblers. Lots and yeah. lots and lots of nibblers. So, no, uh, and that, that was the thing. when I, I, I was laughing with Nelson. I'm like, you know what sucks? He goes, what? I go, I'm catching fish on lures that I haven't caught fish on in two years. Oh, yeah. They were slamming everything. So there's, like, again, the conditions had them put the feed bags on. Yeah. So they were a you whole know? lot less picky. Oh, it was, yeah. So who knows what's going to happen on yeah. Saturday. I have a few leads. I caught some some fish on, on certain kind of lures or a few more fish on certain kinds of lures than others. So mm-hmm. at least I, I have a starting spot. But no, I mean, it, it, day like today does not increase confidence with with catching those big fish so i I don't know what's going to happen these bastards yep yeah pretty much oh my goodness well you know pretty much it's just always interesting to see how how things kind of play out um i got something here oh you do hit me hit me oh i I got i got stuff so with the fishing report right yep we, we have yet to address this now i did the fishing report i compiled it last year and did what cheryl is doing this year yep so this year, like, I always cover my end of the fishing report on the show, and I always feel bad because I give her this abridged version. Mm-hmm. What do we do about that? Do I keep doing that? Do we? <sighs> do you know, she's doing a great job with she's it. Really she's really doing, doing, doing a compilation. great job. I would say keep doing what you're doing. All right. I don't think so anybody's said, like, oh, it's the same crap. You know, I mean, I think giving her an abridged version is, is not a bad thing because you hit the bullet points, right? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I think that's that's probably all right. Because she's got a lot of other sources, too, that she's pulling in for that. So it's not like, you know, you're just throwing a few things out there. This way, it's like you can get real concise and to the point and leave it as is. And if people are really knowing, like, oh, I want to know where Sean's fishing. What's he doing? You know, they know to listen to the show. I got an answer for him. Right there. That's where Sean's fishing. I was giving a big... Mi- <laughs> nice. <laughs> nobody could see that middle finger but we'll, we'll go ahead and describe True. it there. it was a middle finger it was mine 
and I put it up to the camera. <laughs> um, I have a few things also that are uh, kind of lurking around here, just lurking. Skulking Lurk. around the offices of Jigs and Bigs. S skulking, yes. Yes. Uh, I, I mentioned something about fishing rods when I got back from Minnesota, about how, I, how much I missed micro guides. Yes. So there's going to be some reporting and reviewing i think coming down the down the, the the pipe here for me because i may have put in a little not so little order at old glory yes you did for, for a set of micro guide rods so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens with these this should be interesting in. yeah yeah more details to come i'm not going to get into the the make models etc but um yeah I'm, get, I'm getting back to that we're going to see how much fun that is because i i like I said, I, I I have one in Minnesota, and it was an absolute blast to use. And I want to get back into that and see if, you know, see where I'm at. Of course, experiment, experiment. Yeah. So speaking college of is for college is for experimentation. That's right. Yeah. That's yes. Now speaking of experimentation, um, the the crowd of ours, our, our listeners, they're mm -hmm. they're not strangers to the fact that you and I have have dabbled in jigs. Yes, that's very you, true. We have dabbled in jigs. We've created our, our own little set and give, used them for giveaways. We actually still have a few lying around, you know, waiting for those rainy days that that listeners are just, you know, they go above and beyond the call and deserve a jig kit or something. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll figure out shit Troll like that. Troll you a but, jig kit. Yep. But there is a finite amount. Yeah. Compounding that, there's a certain kind of of jig that I use in particular that is a real pain in the ass to A, find lead free and B, find inexpensively. Yep. So I know some people. I know some people who like to play with alloys. <laughs> and I think there's going to be some pleasant surprises again coming down the pipe. We just, you know, keep, stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. Yeah. There's also another thing we're working on a, uh, I came up with an idea. I had a problem that needs to be solved regarding kayaks and tournament fishing. And, um, you know, I, I know another guy too. I know another guy who's a bit of a mad scientist, a Mr. Wizard, if you will, mm -hmm. a, a virtual MacGyver on the water. Uh, yeah, that's, that's very accurate. And, uh, I mentioned it to him and that gentleman said, this sounds like a, sounds like a challenge. You, you tested me. And I said, <laughs> no. And then before I could blink, he had a prototype a working prototype of what I had talked about. Really? I didn't know that there was a working prototype involved. There is. So really? I will be getting together with this fine gentleman and probably coming up with my own prototype this winter, and then we're going to put our heads together and see. Well, honestly, we're going to try and shake the tournament fishing, kayak fishing world to its core mm. and see if we can do that. Yeah. I can get, uh, I can get down with that. Yeah. I like speaking that. of getting <laughs> speaking of getting down. So that's all the fishing I did was just that one day between coming back from the EKF tournament at Winnipesaukee and today, because I have literally been laid up on my couch for most of the week with this yeah. back issue. So that's being addressed this week. I felt I felt better or well enough today to get out there and didn't have to bring an ice pack with me. Um I am applying it before I go to bed, I'm sure. And uh man, getting old really does suck. It's what the fuck? You ain't kidding. I didn't sign on for this shit. No, it does suck. It yeah. does. It absolutely sucks. Yeah. yeah. Friggin' bananas, man. That's cool. That's very cool. One thing I think that uh, I want to throw out there is is another idea that Sean had come up with is uh, th this year or a, a year ago today, so when, when episodes have been dropping, kind of like looking back at what we've been doing like a year ago. And so you guys can see some of those posts, some of the guests that we've had on, some of the topics that we've talked about, stuff like that. A lot of our episodes actually, believe it or not, a lot of our episodes age well. They age better than Sean and myself actually do, you know, True. which is, that's accurate. <laughs> um, yep. That, that post, I'll be, I'll be posting on the Sean the Fisherman the at Sean the Fisherman, S H A W N T H E F I S H E R M A N. I spelled that good, huh? You did. At at Sean the Fisherman on Instagram. I post it there. Bobby always reposts it for the Jigs and Bigs account. Uh, I've called it uh, This Week in Jigs and Bigs, and I'm just going to go back every week and look at what we did a year ago. We've got 
We've got the, the volume there, and Bobby is attaching the old swipe up link, so you can go right to that episode if you want to see what we were doing a year ago. Yeah, check them out. You know, see, yeah. see if you may, maybe there was something that you missed you want to go back and check out. So this will be kind of like a cool way to go ahead and do that, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So everyone, I hope you enjoy that if you're in the process of catching up. I mean, I know it seems like most of our listeners that jump on like now, they we always get reports of, yeah, I'm in the process of binging, so they're doing the – Start at both ends and work to the middle. A lot of, of them thing. do. A lot of yeah. them do. Yeah, they they'll they'll start because yeah that that first episode still gets listens. There's some that haven't been touched in a little bit, but you know there's there's some some stuff. Also, there's a few episodes I kind of would like to build off of some guests that we've had on before that I'd like to have on to kind of touch base with. Um, there was one. There was one guest that I had just sent out the link to schedule um, a recording with, and uh, we have mutual friends in Largemouth Sass, and oh. it, it was this guest had said, I would love to do this with Largemouth Sass, and kind of like the three of us just have a conversation. I was like, let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm very open to that idea, so we'll figure it out and see what's going on. Yeah, perfect. Check that out. Mm-hmm. I'll have those up every week. I yep. started last week, and we're just going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. And, of course, you know, uh, Jigs and Bigs has uh, continually been been making some changes. The playlist, our Spotify playlist is up there. I've started a volume two, um, and I'm just slowly adding songs here and there. Um, and we'll, we'll post that up once we get, you know, maybe like – an hour, an hour and a half worth of music on there where it's kind of worth listening to. And you guys can check that one out too. I was like, screw it. We'll just start volume two. And as I'm finding songs, I'll add them on and we'll have ourselves a good time. A lot of that's going to have to do with the podcast as well. As things show up, we mention songs and things get tied in and we'll, you know, kind of, kind of work them all in there. And of course the fishing report drops every Thursday for you guys to check out. That's over at uh, northeastwildwoman.com. Check out that blog because there's all kinds of good stuff. The fishing report, our uh, our jig heads that contribute, we appreciate you guys, and the merch over at jigsandbigs.com still available, still priced for that introductory level too. So if you want to go over there and save some cash, now's the time to do it because once we get to fall, things are going to be changing. We're going to be dropping some designs too. Good yeah, stuff. What 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 day do the introductory prices end on that shit? I got to look it up on the calendar. I was going to use the actual start date of fall. Like the oh, so actual the 20... autumn equinox, so like the 21st or 22nd, I think. Yeah, 20, yeah, I think it's 22nd. Something 22nd. like that. Yeah, fuck if I know. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure what it falls on this year, but yeah, it's usually right around there, the 21st or 22nd. I noted to Nelson today that there were trees already changing colors, the leaves were already changing up in the up Isn't the it sheer. crazy? Isn't it nuts yeah. to see it? It really is. And I noticed, I really kind of noticed it last night for the first time, the sun is starting to go down earlier. Don't tell me that. Yeah, I don't like that. No, no, we, we need to be on our own time zone up here in new England. Cause we just, it just doesn't make sense for us no. to be on the East coast. We should be Atlantic, but I, did you see that a couple of years ago? There was a, a study done in the, in our state and Maine. I want to say Maine and either New Hampshire or Vermont. I thought we're all involved in it. And they said, yeah, we'd love to do this, but we're so close to New York. It would fuck everything up. Like how? How do you not? How can you not subtract an hour or add an hour when you need to if you're a businessman? Like, it's one hour. What's the problem? Huh. You know, I mean, people in Chicago can operate, you know, in Central Time Zone. They can function with New York, that's in the Eastern Time Zone. Why can't we? Is Chicago smarter than us? Hmm. I don't know that. I'm not saying they aren't. No. What the fuck? Why do Why do we have darkness at four o'clock in the afternoon in the winter and nine o'clock at night? Fucking the summer this and the summer time. Yeah, it's true. Uh, Nick jumps in here and he says, uh, "Sorry that he had to add shiny happy people on that playlist because of us fine happy people." When he heard it, uh, I actually noticed that shiny happy people was on there, and I was like, "Did I add that? Did Sean <laughs> add that?" And it's weird because I did add an REM song. I added "Night Swimming" from episode two. Excellent song. Love. Love, love Night Swimming. Love Automatic for the People. Oh, yeah. Great, great album. But there's just something about... I never told the story about that, about Night Swimming and why that song is so like... Like, so Paul and I have a series of like these stupid moments where something like an an iota of it is funny and forever that joke just lives on. Um, I'll give you an example. There was one day where... (sighs) 
Paul and I used to take regularly these Saturday afternoons where we would go to a Chinese buffet and make the place our bitch was the idea. (laughs) And then oftentimes it would be, uh, we'd follow that up with uh, an extended stay at a uh, B, C, or D level uh, strip club and just kind of hang out and spend the the afternoon drinking and and conversing with... um, fine folks over these establishments and uh, there's one time where i had stopped to get gas and i was driving we're in my car hold on hold on you went to a chinese food place made it your bitch and you still needed gas (laughs) no this is before we went to the buffet oh it was before in fact it was that you know that little gas station that's across the street from scrappies and chicken me i do yeah it was that one so i'm pulling out of that that parking lot and and Fucking Paul. He looks at me and he's like, or he doesn't look at me. He's just, I'm looking, you know, to see if traffic is, if, if it's clear for me to go. And and as I start pulling out, he goes, look out for the truck. <laughs> just And there was no truck there. That yeah. asshole. So I'm freaking out, you know, may have been under the influence of something or other. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh, my God. And there's nothing there. He's laughing his ass off. So this whole time, I'm like, I'm going to get you, you son of a bitch. This is like in 2000. Fast forward to 2018, 2017, maybe. Maybe it was 2017. I'm on my way to do trivia in Ludlow, and I happen to cut through the area of Granby where Paul lives, and I'm going by his house, and I see him looking in his mailbox like, you know, like he's looking for something that's hidden in there. Like he's like reaching for Narnia. You know what I mean? Like he was very, he was in treasure. there. He was digging. You know what I mean? He was like, where is that freaking electric bill? Jesus Christ. You know, and I go driving by. I drop my windows. I am half hanging my fat ass out the window. And I scream, look out for the truck. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is like 15, 16 years later. I... I, I climb my fat ass back through in the window. I'm sitting there and I look in the in the rearview mirror and all I see is him looking over my way and a bunch of envelopes falling like confetti. He was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I, I, I say that as like to, to build this up. So one night, Paul and I are out fishing. And this was back when the two of us were just like, we should really start i think i think we had both signed up for like tackle grab to kind of like add to our at arsenals of stuff and put ourselves in a, in a position where we would like try different baits and experiment with some different things so we went out night fishing a lot usually like friday nights is way before i was ever yeah it was way before i was ever doing trivia i was just working in tv at the time we're out of this place <coughs> and it is dead quiet so quiet we have headlamps on we've got them in the red setting so that the bugs aren't like crazy attracted to it and we're sitting there doing our thing and and i shut my night my light off i don't know why i think i was i forget what i was working for a bait and and he shuts his off and then grabs his phone and puts his phone back in his pocket and we're doing our thing we're both pitching jigs or whatever and I hear night swimming start. Night swimming. Perfect. I'm like, what? <laughs> Paul's like, I thought it I thought it, it hit the mood perfectly or something like that. We're like, what? <laughs> so forever it's sort of just been this thing where we go fishing and one of us will just start singing night swimming at one point or another. We'll be fishing in the middle of the day or what it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So I played that song in episode two. God, I'm so long-winded. I've been talking for so long about this stupid little anecdote. <laughs> oh, oh let, me, let me let me add something. Just because you <laughs> mentioned that you mentioned that Chinese food place on East Street, right? Well, the the one that we used to go to is um, you remember the Marshalls parking lot in uh, Springfield, right off of uh, Boston Road, corner of Boston and Parker. Yes, that one. That's the one. We oh, used to go to. oh, I thought yeah. you were talking about up on East Street. Is that, well, I'll just tell this story. Tell anyway. that story Seriously. anyway, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought we were talking about the same Chinese food place, but one of the last, uh, obviously with my, you know, fucking God, I hate saying this. All, with my allergies, I haven't eaten Chinese food in probably 15 or 20 years. Yep. Right? Prior to that, um, one of my buddies had a, had a house party that I don't think he was supposed to have when he was still living with his parents, right? <laughs> he was still under those rules. And before the party started, this was around – a March Madness tournament. Yep. And I said, yeah, let's watch the tournament. And I I was one of the first couple people over there, and we got Chinese food. So I had just cracked a beer, and I had a 
thing of Chinese food in my left hand, beer in my right. I Life's remember good. standing up from the couch and I, I, I had just got out of work. I was exhausted. I was tired. I remember yawning and stretching and I put both my fucking hands into the ceiling fan because I'm a, <laughs> I'm a tall giant. So when I did that, beer and fucking fried rice went everywhere. 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 Now, again, he was still living in his home and his, he wasn't supposed to be having this party. We cleaned it up the best we could. I'm like, oh, my God. I threw There's beer on the fucking walls. There's Chinese fucking duck everywhere. sauce everywhere. Yeah, so I don't know. Like we cleaned it up, and no big deal. We just left it alone. I thought we'd cleaned it up well enough. Well, years later, no. My mom says something to me. And I'm like, she goes, "Oh, hey, so I heard you over at your friend's house, and you had a party with, and you were throwing beer and rice everywhere." And I'm like, "That was, <laughs> so that was like, like, that was like eight years ago. What? What are you talking? What, where? How did you? How do you know that? Like we cleaned it up. What's the big deal?" She yeah. goes, "Oh, I saw your friend's mother." And she was cleaning behind the stereo and the TV and found a whole bunch of rice and there was beer stains everywhere. And then her son told her, oh, yeah, Sean stood up and fucking put his hands right into the fan. I go, Mom, I go, it was after work. I wasn't even drunk. Like, it was the first beer I'd opened. I, I just, I stretched. So that happened. I heard about it years later about whipping food all over this living room. Uh, I, I, you know, of all the stupid things I've done drunk, that I wasn't even drunk for that. No, like, that that yeah. Night, but but I was fine for the Chinese food incident. Yeah. These things happen. Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Damn. <laughs> Watch out for that truck. <sighs> Watch out for that truck. Yeah. Damn. Well, guys, we have a whole lot more to get to <laughs> in uh, segment two for you. Um, f- it, it's going to take a turn in a lot of ways. So what we've got coming up, just so you're aware – in just the tip, we're going to talk uh, about uh, how do you get started bass fishing. If if this is something you want to do, like let's take the take the calendar and look back all those years when we first started. Like, what are some suggestions that we would do for somebody who just wants to get started? Uh, and then, of course, we're going to talk about um, the Connecticut trips of uh, Connecticut trips, the chronic trips. <laughs> I got to stop abbreviating that way in our notes. <laughs> like Connecticut update. I'm like, no, chronic trips. We got to talk about that because the the month is ticking by. It is. We're in the throes where it's going to happen. And of course, you know, the, the Jigs and Bigs uh, tournament for September, registration's open now on Fishing Chaos. So you can go ahead and go and, and get in there. And the, 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 the big one and the, and the thing that we've kind of been pushing and pushing on is this, uh, we've got a, a fuck this guy or a fuck that guy that is one for the ages. This is... Uh, and, and it's just, I've already spoiled who, what it is, but we're going to get into it. If you follow us on Instagram, you know what we're going to talk about, and it is it is ghastly. Um, real piece of shit. Yeah, real piece of shit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get to that, guys. We have a word from our good friends over at Old Glory Outdoors. Uh, remember, use promo code Jigs and Bigs and save some cash. You can even use it in store. We'll be back right after this. Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce we're being supported by Old Glory Outdoors. They're a veteran-owned company that carries fishing and hunting gear. Plus, they're highly active in supporting veteran organizations and charities. Old Glory is an authorized dealer of favorite rods, FX rods, Guggen baits, X-Zone lures, Sixth Sense, and many more. There's a brick-and-mortar store located in East Brookfield, Massachusetts, but you can also order online at oldgloryoutdoors.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or Order online and pick up at the store. When you order, use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, and you'll save ten percent off your complete order. Plus, you'll help support the show. Make sure to check out the apparel line called OGO Gear while you're there. Old Glory Outdoors believes in the slogan "Start them young" to keep kids away from screens and enjoying nature. They've got a full array of live bait too. Check out OldGloryOutdoors.com and use the promo code Jigs and Bigs. Save some money and gear up now. Bobby and Sean now have a special presentation for us all. They'd like to give everyone just the tip. You're damn right. You are damn right. That's what we're doing. Giving you guys just the tip. And this tip is specifically 
for that new angler. Somebody who's, you know, maybe just getting into bass fishing and they're looking to kind of get out and do this on their own. What do they need to get started? There's a million different like videos that you can watch and things like that, that, that are on YouTube or, you know, a lot of different guides for like how to get started and everything. And, and we're basically going to jump in. We're going to talk we're primarily what we're going to focus on is, is the equipment. Like what's the, what's the, what's the best guidance we can provide you with in order to kind of get moving. So let's go ahead and get to it. This is going to tie into uh, a, a, one of your interview questions that you always ask. One of my just oh yeah, yeah yeah build exactly yeah yeah build a rod. You're going you're going to one body of water. What are you going to bring? Hold on, there's headlights coming down the street. <coughs> I think I think I hear ride the lightning. Yeah, <laughs> they're coming for you. That means Bobby and Sean are coming down the street with a van. They're taking you somewhere. Yep. Pond but, um, to be on, on, uh, d- disclosed later. Yes. And I think the most recent interview we had with John and Judy Richardson. No, I'm yep. sorry. Adam was Adam was after that. But with John and Judy Richardson, they answered it dead on what I would recommend to anybody who's just learning to get into fishing, doesn't want to break the bank. Yep. Start with a spinning combo. Yep. Maybe 10. 10 pound test is probably where I would recommend, at least for the Northeast, you go in the South. I, I get it. It's going to be different. You're going to, yeah. you're going to want to use some heavier line for whatever's going on down there, whatever you got to throw at, but 10 pound mono, a good spinning combo, meaning, well, I mean, I say good, good spinning combo. I buy, you know, I buy some shitty reels for spinning combos and they, they last. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't spend the money on spinning reels. I, I will say this much that you will save a lot of money buying a spinning reel overall. They're priced a lot lower, Um, you know, and you can get away with, you know, um, I think the important thing is the size of the reel. You know, you want to be able to have the right amount, you know, you don't want to get a reel that's, that's too small. You don't want to be using, you know, like a, a 1500 reel or something like that. You want a two or a 300 series series reel, something like that, that you can put some decent line on for the most part. Most of your spinning reels that are out there are going to be in that four and a half to five and a half uh, speed gear ratio, you know, yep. somewhere between a four or five to one gear ratio. So it's not going to be a super fast reel, but this combo will serve you for years to come. Um, and what I would recommend is to get a, uh, I would recommend a seven foot medium uh, spinning combo. Or medium heavy if you can find one. They're a little... It, they are. They're if, a little more rare. Um, yeah. and, and I would say this. If you were... I, I If you like a little bit more of a of a, uh, a sensitive rod, if that's what you're, you're looking for, uh, a rod, and you want to go medium light, go with a longer rod. Because that longer rod will give you a little bit more leverage, um, which is helpful. You know? So like I've got a 7.3 medium light that I love. And I would recommend to anybody. Um, Let me ask you a question. Fire away. All right. So, so we're looking at the new angler who might go from a Ned rig to, to a, jig. a Senko to a frog. Or a Texas would rig. You, yeah. Would you be throwing that on a medium light? I don't think I would. I would throw medium, medium with like a stiffer medium or if you could find a medium heavy. So I like, would yeah, I, I I'm with you. I would also yeah. I would um I would not throw a frog. Um I, I would not throw a topwater frog on uh not a tr- typical topwater frog. I would take that out of your arsenal because why? you won't have the same ex- there's a video I'm gonna show I'm gonna send to you which will explain why. Um I, why not throw it open water? I mean you, can, you- I, I feel like that's almost almost a waste. If you're in open water, I think there's other baits that you could use. You well, know, if you're using a popper and you don't want to spend yep. money on a popper and a frog, why not buy the popping frog? Then you've got versatility. The hookups are a little bit more difficult and you have to be able to drive those hooks on that frog home. I, I, I get it. But yeah. we're looking at the round picture yeah. of yeah. you want to Which, do everything with one rod. Well, I, you know? and, and I, I will say that, that this is where we will disagree is that mm-hmm. there is nothing is a all one rod. It's a mostly rod. Um, you'll never get a rod that's going to do every little thing that you need it to do the way it's intended to be. Well, yeah, you're going to have yep. give and take, but you can throw it. Yeah. Oh, you if, can throw it. Yeah. You can throw it. I don't know. And like, that's the thing I would say, you know, 
there's certain things where, and it, this is where this whole beginner thing is going to take 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 shape. I would the, the the numbers you want to pay attention to on your rods are the weights of the lures that are recommended, yep. and 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 even even more so than the line because if you're you know if you're throwing they're they're rated usually for mono or fluoro, you know with the size of line that they're they're you know recommending. Um, but if you're if you if you do throw braid and and that's what you're doing, there there may be come a time where you decide to go braid to a leader on your spinning combos. There's a lot of people that that make that choice, you know. But I think you're you're right on. I would I would say a seven foot medium rod. If you can find a medium heavy, great. I have a seven foot medium heavy, and the thing is is fantastic. Um, it's not the most sensitive rod, and I think for the new fisherman. Uh, it helps if you have a little bit more sensitivity to detect bites um, and things like that. Uh, but, you know, like for throwing light Texas rigs, for throwing Neds, for throwing uh, small spinner baits, for throwing even, you know, light chatter baits, you could get by with a seven foot medium with no problem. If, yep. you know, you want to throw top water and, you know, and, and I think the line recommendation, you and I both agree, start with mono. Yep. You know, I because it'll float and, and at the same time you also get the um the the ability for it to not be as easily seen as braid. Um plus, you know, there's some lessons to be learned with mono. You know, yeah, and it's 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 not as expensive as either of braid or fluoro, so that too. this is learning time. Go yeah, ahead and if you're going to be it up. cutting off a bunch of stuff, absolutely. So, the um a lot of people might say, "Well, why wouldn't you just start with a bait caster?" And I mean, it's difficult from from my my two cents. The reason why I wouldn't start somebody with a bait caster is uh, primarily one because I just want them to fish and not get frustrated. Once they start catching fish, then the idea of sticking with a bait caster and and putting the effort in because it does take effort to kind of get it down and deal with the frustration. You know, I mean. For a new angler, it can be crazy, you know? And I mean, especially, you know, I've taken, you know, when I've been out with my kids and I'll take one of my bait casters and set them up and set the brakes, uh, set the brakes crazy high and adjust the spool tension for them. And they can cast all of 10 feet, yeah. you know? And it's like, you're not necessarily getting that bait where it needs to go. You know, you don't necessarily have the accuracy, but it's a start, but it's a frustrating start, you know? Before you can start loosening things up so that you can get the distance that you want, it, it it takes a little bit of time. So getting a spinning combo, I think, is super important, you know? Yeah, get that medium. Yep. Get whatever reel you want. As long as it's around <coughs> 2,500 size, you should be able to do everything. Not perfectly, but you should be able to do everything with that. Yep. That 10-pound mono, if you want to go to 12, if you can find a thinner diameter, great. But, I mean, I use 10 on mine, on both of my spinning combos. Um, use 10 and then... You know, like I said, it's not going to be a perfect frog setup by any means. Yeah, no, but you can throw not. one and and it'll stay elevated. Your lures that are sinking, um, like like a Texas rig or a Ned rig or a drop shot, those will all sink. Eh, I mean, if they're weighted a hair slower because the mono is going to want to float. Yep. You know, but it's definitely a good starter. So, you know, twenty five hundred series, seven foot medium or medium heavy. The important part of that's a fast action tip. Yep. And then find yourself, I mean, I use a, oh shit, what is the, uh, I was buying spools of Berkeley Big Game, and I just switched back to, what is it, is it maybe Suffix? Now I'm going to look it up what I use. For your mono? Yeah. Hold on, I'll tell you what I use. You know, for mono, I have some Berkeley Big Game, um, but it was like one of those things where I had ordered like a mystery box. And it's like yep. 40 pound Berkeley big game mono. It's huge. It's wire. Uh, yeah, it really is. It is. It's like cable. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing. You don't want to, you know, you, you, the, the best thing that you can do is, is start with some, some decent line, you know, and um, bring in your, you know, be patient. You know, I would, in, in all honesty, I, I would suggest to anybody who is just starting out, the best thing that you could do is get, get yourself a, a, uh, a, a not even a decent, but like, uh, get yourself a, a, a medium power, uh, spinning combo, you know, like 2,500 reel, spool it with mono, get some offset worm hooks and some Senkos. Yeah, that's exactly, it's, it's such a home run, you know? Um, yeah, it is suffix that I've been using. I like suffix. It is suffix, yeah. Yeah, anytime you have something that's precision wound, 
on the re- on the spool. Yeah, that tends to it cuts down on the irregularities in the line. Supposedly, and through my reading, that's what I found. And mm-hmm. um, like the Berkeley Big Game is great, but you know you might find a thinner part, a thicker part because of the way it's wound. And then supposedly, um precision spooling and i know suffix does it for their mono suffix does it for everything i'm pretty sure and then like seaguar does it for their fluoros it doesn't mm-hmm. matter for braid but um yeah i mean i use suffix it's fine you can buy it at your local um <clears throat> richard sporting goods or just go straight to old glory outdoors they yeah go to old glory sure. that's what you yep. want to do and you so know yeah it's- you, oh, you don't have to you don't have to spend a ton of coin on on uh, especially on, on on the rod you know you you really really don't i would suggest um if you can if you can transport it get a one piece rod yes um, i always I recommend, recommend that yeah when i recommend to beginners is usually <coughs> to to save people money i'll send them the link to the the incredibly cheap ass inshore reels that i buy mm. like i love those inshore and they're discontinued now so i'm going to be looking for something new down the road but um, those are like thirty dollars a piece. Yep. And then I'll recommend usually to start um, the Berkeley Lightning rods are fine. Yeah, they make a medium heavy for their spinning. I uh, I have been loving the Lou's uh, Mach Smash spinning co- mm-hmm. spinning reel and the Mach Two that I've been using. Mach Two is a little bit more pricey, um, yep. but it's a tank. Like it's it's a it's yep. a great great spinning reel. That's one I use on that medium heavy, and it's awesome. Um. I think I think the Berkeley that I just recommended is like thirty dollars ish. Yep. So now you're talking sixty for the combo, and then the line's like ten bucks. So seventy dollars will get you a good combo that you can pretty much throw anything with. Yep. You know, yeah. and you'll be fine to learn. So if you're getting if you're getting uh, well, Christmas is coming. If you're getting stuff for your kids that are just learning to fish and want to take that step up to have something, I'm, I mean, moderately quality yep. to throw, a bit better than a you know a Shakespeare combo you're getting somewhere. Did I just throw Shakespeare under the bus? I'm you, sorry. Shakespeare. I think you did. Yeah, fuck it. They make shitty combos. One, so- <laughs> there's there's one other thing that I want to add in there that I think would be very useful for any new angler. Like I said, you know, going out there getting you know some offset worm hooks or some EWG hooks and and uh, some Senko, some plastics, some lizards, like the stuff that you just think is cool. Plastics, it's a great place to start. You know, um, you know, maybe get some 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 weights so that you can you know weight them if you need to. But I mean, you can rig them relatively weedless that's really helpful especially where we are we have a lot of grass and uh, mm-hmm. up in our area so it comes in really really helpful uh i will say this a subscription box is not a bad idea for yeah, that for, new for beginners when it's, you're building stuff not, absolutely yeah. i mean i i think that there there's two types of two groups of people that a subscription box works for is that that like a new angler who's just like what you know because you you go into an old glory and though you do have the the specialists that work at old glory that can say oh well this is where you're fishing this is what you're looking for this is what you're doing okay i would recommend this that's great but if you just want to go and get involved like go out and buy some like packages of like just a bunch of stuff and then take the time to learn how to use those baits like the combat box that joe is doing for old glory that's a great idea you know, something yep. like that. Even if you go in store and you pick one up and you don't subscribe, like the idea of, of getting one of these boxes, it kind of gets you to think like outside of your element a little bit. And then yep. take advantage of the people that you know, you know, ask questions. Yeah. And that, that combat box that Joe makes, I believe, I believe there's different levels. There's a yep. beginner, intermediate and advanced, right? And that's how he divvies up what goes in each mm-hmm. box. So definitely give it a try. I mean, yeah, if you're just starting... It's definitely the time to fool around with different colors and different everything and, you know, get some extra wide gap hooks. Excellent advice, Bobby. There is uh, a couple of comments coming in here. We got Andy jumps in. He says, for your first bait caster, you should throw braid. When you overspin it, it's easier to clear out. You won't have any big kinks in your mono or fluoro. Uh, then we've got uh, hooked up north says, braid's definitely more user-friendly. Toss some O-ring picks in your bag, and you won't trash your line with every overrun. Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, I I am a believer in braid for certain applications. I use braid on one bait caster. It's my flipping uh, stick and my frog and stick. That's that's what I what I use there. Everything else for me is all fluoro. But I would suggest for the beginner, like there are certain things that you should definitely learn getting out of the gate. Learn one knot. Learn Palomar. 
Palomar, baby. Learn a knot that you have faith in and can tie well on a regular basis. I always say, I'm, I'm with you, man. I think Palomar, you were the one that showed me how to tie the Palomar knot. Now that is, that's like 70% my go-to knot. You know what that's I mean? Like most of the time. 100% for me, my go-to knot, <laughs> other than other than line to line, which a Palomar is not suited for. Yeah, exactly. Like line I to line a, is about the difference. I mean, you know, generally yeah. speaking, I'm tying a Palomar for the most part, unless I'm tying, you know, like a loop knot or something like that for something very specific. But even that's rare. Yeah. Um, I go I go Palomar for everything. But everything. I, I would highly recommend the Palomar knot's a really, really easy knot to learn, and it's really strong. So it's a great place to start, but definitely learn a great line to bait not and then don't stop there learn a line to line knot whether it's yep. a blood knot or whether it's a uni knot a double uni knot that's the one i like a lot of people like the albright there's a new kind of albright uh knot there's the uh what is it the fg clinch i saw something called an fk what is that i don't know i got i'm so out of touch man yeah, uh, well uh, i got i got some investigating to do because supposedly it's a braid <laughs> to fluoro knot yep. that if you're using like micro guides it cuts down on that the friction yeah it catching. So i'm kind yeah. of interested in learning a little bit there but i will tell you that um so i am a big believer and you know sean and i have talked about this before uh, on every single spinning combo i have even the ones that i put together for my my family and, and my my wife um uh, uh, well yeah i guess my wife is my family too uh <laughs> you know even <laughs> even for the family stuff I've put braid on everything. It just comes off the spool so much better. There's no memory. You don't get the same type of um, wind. Uh, like I don't even not want to limit it to, to wind, wind knots because it's not. You could still get wind knots. That's that's one thing. But line twist is just brutal. You know, with with some of this stuff. Sometimes you're reeling in, and if you have a fish on, and you're like, you look at your reel, and it's just like pfft, all crazy line everywhere because you've got this massive spool that's like twist it all up there it's just a headache braid works really well but i will say as a tip try to avoid that braid knot from going especially on on bait casters i try to avoid that that uh that uh line to line knot going down the guides at all so instead of you know when i first started tying leaders i would get lazy and i do like a, a 7 to 14 foot leader i'm not kidding <laughs> Because I was lazy and I didn't want to retie that leader. I'd rather just cut off and have enough leader to go as, a, oh, I'm going to fish a Ned. I'm going to fish a drop shot. Well, now that drop shot is going to be this much line I got to cut off when I change the bait. So I was being lazy, but I did notice that, you know, even my spinning gear, I would hear that ting from that knot, yeah. usually at that top, at the tip you know, and I would hear it and I'm just like, you know what, that something's going to catch one of these days and it's going to be a, an, an issue. It hasn't yet, but I would recommend like learn one of those knots. And then if you want to change over to braid for your spinning gear, then you've got that as another way in your arsenal to kind of like make all this stuff kind of happen. And then, you know, beyond that, there are other combos that we would recommend. In fact, we've already talked about some of these. Uh, we talked about, we made a uh, commentary on, um, uh, uh, Mike Iaconelli's top three combos that every angler should utilize. One of those is exactly this spinning combo that we're talking about. Yep. Exactly. So, and it's, that's a place to start. It's not like you're going to, you know, you're going to use this and say, okay, cool. I can catch some fish. And then you're like going to throw it in your trunk and never use it again. You're probably going to leave a net tied on here all the time is yeah, what, or, what's going to end up happening. Or that Senko that we just re recommended or that <laughs> stick worm. That too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or, I mean, I've been, I've been loving fishing a fluke. On a spinning combo. Yeah. I've been absolutely loving it. It's great. I mean, for weightless soft plastics, it's just, it's a home run. So that, for, for, for my money, like, that I think is the tip. Like, that's how you want to go and get yourself started. Subscription box doesn't hurt, you know. Um, experiment, you know. And, and, and ultimately, more than anything, have fun. If you find yourself getting, like, frustrated, take five. You know, yep. put it down and walk back over to it. It'll be, it'll be all good. To the YouTubes. To the YouTubes. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, God. Wait, waiting on another theme song right now, aren't we? We are. We are waiting on another theme, theme song. We, uh, we, you want to cover this tournament stuff before we get into the FTG, or should we just jump right in and give them the, uh, the FTG? Let's give them the FTG, and then we'll have the tournament stuff for a palate cleanser. For a palate cleanser. I think that's the best idea I've heard all night. Here we go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. 
you'll notice we're not laughing. We are not laughing. No matter how awesome that open is, we're not laughing this time. Uh, it's because we have something pretty disgusting to talk about right here. Um, I had just yesterday, I had spotted a, a, a on, on uh, it was actually Largemouth Sass. She had shared on her story a post from Animal Help Now app, uh, a, a, a Instagram account for Animal Help Now, which is uh, an app that, you know, provides assistance for wildlife and, and uh, various animals. And they put up a story. It was a video. And it was, they also shared this on their YouTube channel. And it basically reads, felony animal cruelty $500 reward. Do you know this person? Now, the video in here depicts, um, it's like from a, almost like a GoPro uh, or something. It, it depicts uh, somebody, this guy, uh, young, young guy, <coughs> who is holding a piece of bread that has a bunch of really small treble hooks in the bread. And what he does is he feeds, um, what, what kind of duck is this? They mentioned what kind of duck it is, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, but he feeds this duck, this bread that is loaded. And there's probably about like 10 small trebles in there. And the duck immediately has it stuck in its throat and is basically choking on it and is in clearly in distress. And he kind of just laughs about it and says, you know, how's it taste, bud? He drops some, uh, some racist language in there too. You know, real, just a, a top-notch guy. And I want to go ahead and read the uh, the updates because what, what Animal Help Now has been doing has been providing info and then giving updates to this. So on Friday, they, they, they posted this initially, I think, on uh, Friday... No, it wasn't even that long ago, but this happened on Friday, August 13th. There was an Instagram user that at the time was going under the name un, uh, inshore underscore Chris. That account has since been deleted. Um, uh, apparently, this user had published this video showing a person uh, that is feeding bread laced with treble fish hooks to a Muscovy duck. Uh, most likely in the Broward County, Florida, the duck immediately goes into distress. The video ends soon thereafter. Animal Help Now is working with Florida authorities and media and is offering up $500 as a reward for the information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone involved with recording or distributing this video. Now, with all that said, they go and provide an update, which was Friday uh, the 20th at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, says that uh, suspect has been identified and reported to authorities. They then update again at 8.50 p.m. that evening, saying that uh, Miramar Police Department interviews suspect inshore Chris, who denies being the person who fed the fish the hooks to the ducks and claims not to know the person who did. Case now goes public to the MPD detectives. If the city forces uh, animal help now to go do a public pressure campaign, so be it. We've had lots of experience with those, and we know... Uh, that you and 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 we know you are as angry as angry as we are. By all accounts, this kid is just a bully, and it's time for him to pay. Uh, they then update again, and this was just on Saturday evening. It says, "Feeling optimistic today." We spoke with the Miramar Police Department again, and they're confident their detectives will be closer to reviewing the uh, abundance of damning evidence connecting Inshore Chris and 954.ca with animal cruelty. Importantly, new and related video has surfaced. I have not seen this video. Uh, more, follow, more to follow on that. We're going to have to tease through a pile of messages if and when that time comes to give the reward, it will be split at least a few ways. Probably no need to increase the reward, the reward at this point, but Animal Help Now is a small nonprofit. We do occasionally do this work uh, in addition to providing our free wildlife emergency app. For example, uh, see, for example, justiceformillie.org. If you'd like to make a small donation to our nonprofit, please do it, A-H, uh, A-H-N- ahnowrather.org slash donate. Thanks again for caring deeply about this poor duck and for those who have been so viciously abused by these dangerous individuals. Now, there's more going on here. You know, not only is this disgusting, unsportsmanlike conduct, and the comments from when I had reposted this reflected everybody's um, similar sentiments. Everybody's pissed, you know? But with that said, there are much larger red flags, and Sean and I both had had picked up on this right away. And uh, a couple of people in our in our comments from when I reshared this said the same thing. This is a huge red flag because this is where a lot of serial killers and uh, you know mass shooters 
they 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 fuck with animals first generally speaking like that's a common lineup that happens you know usually animal abuse is the the sort of that that first initial sign uh that there's something wrong with these individuals so i mean if I don't know what the idea was behind this, but I think that there's more like somebody needs to, you know, reel this person in and do an eval, I think is really what it gets down to. You know, you sent me that story initially and I, I didn't realize it was a video. Yeah. And then I watched the video and I was disgusted. And when we talked earlier today, when I was leaving um, fishing, I I was really prepped for a whole bunch of serial killer comments because oh yeah i'm pretty disgusted with it you're disgusted with it i just i don't even have the heart to be quite honest this is probably going to be my shortest fuck that guy like fuck that guy like why would you do that yeah it's it's, it's awful it's, it's ridiculous torturous dude yep. why would you do that yep like i, I we, we've talked about it numerous times on the show where i think i found three or four bass that have yep. been in the process of passing treble hooks yeah I've seen that he, before too. He gave it to a fucking duck. What an asshole. Fuck that guy. I don't get him evaluated. And and those uh, those hooks that are on there are tiny treble what hooks. A, what a I, prick. I couldn't see it on my phone because you know I'm an old man now. So like, you know, I didn't have my readers on and I couldn't see it on my phone to identify it. And, and a couple of comments had come through and people were just like, I hope this isn't real. Like I couldn't see if they were real treble hooks or anything. I just watched this on my on my desktop right here. On my big monitor, they're a hundred percent tiny trouble hooks there's probably about a dozen of them buried in what looks like a bagel or a piece of bread you know what a piece of shit fuck that guy awful that guy. like takes takes the cake probably if we were to do a fuck that guy pageant who's the fuckiest of them all this guy is definitely the winner the duck fucker yeah yeah where's where's it where are they out of florida California? florida florida broward county florida and and right in there in the in the first picture. So I went and I looked at the um I looked at the account that was up there and it was obviously like it had gone private and then t this was 2 days ago. No, this was just yesterday cuz it was just Saturday and I found out about this Saturday morning. So I shared this Saturday morning and then uh, I looked up at the account to track him down to see what was what the scoop was, what the account looked like. That's really what it was. And it was private. And I said, "Okay, all right, that's kind of all right. So Again, if, if the, you're doing this for clout, like the kids like to say, you know, if you're doing this kind of video and you think it makes you cool or gangsta or whatever, and, you know, you want to be a badass, why is your account private? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm thinking that the private account was probably uh, done in uh, in retrospect, like, a, oh, shit, I got to keep people from looking at my account type thing. Uh, and then I think that uh, he had then created multiple other accounts, all of which seem to keep getting deleted. I don't know if it's Instagram saying, nope, you can't do this, like he's using an email address that's tied to him or something like that or, or whatever it is. I, I don't exactly know, but it, I would just say from the, the temperature of the comments that were in our thread alone, let alone anywhere else that I've seen, um, this kid better watch out. Yeah, dude, I'm sure the PETA people fucking were not pleased. This hits on so many levels. Like every outdoorsman that's 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 a sportsman at all with any type of an iota of sportsman like, you know, pride uh is is going to jump down his throat. Anybody who's a, a I mean and, and I say animal nuts, like I don't mean animal nuts. There's, you know, obviously like we care about animals, you know what I mean? We're dog guys. <laughs> you know, it's like we have pets and we we you know, we we practice catch and release for the most part, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I get it, but there are people who are just like, they're, 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 they're legit. I mean, this is, he's getting this from all angles, which if they end up prosecuting him, I'm sure that's exactly what's going to happen to him. Yeah. And, and, you know, I've always taught my kids, like it's, it's okay as a sportsman yep. to kill for food. Yeah. And, and only take what you're going to eat. Don't go out there and kill every fucking fish or yeah. every duck or every turtle or whatever. If you're, if you, if you got a legal limit of trout, keep your legal limit of trout and and dispatch them as humanely mm -hmm. as possible. And that's and that. Taught, I think is what I've is taught. the key. You know, is you need to dispatch these animals as humanely as you, as you can quickly. Like, I mean, come on, dude. We catch fish and we're going to eat them. What's the first thing you do? You bleed them out. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? I I throw them on ice so that immediately. 
yeah hopefully it's just a, a quick and easy <coughs> yeah quick and easy and painless as possible uh, passing and then yeah. eat their food you want to keep That's- it exactly you don't want that to go to waste but like when you're throwing a bunch of treble hooks into a duck's gullet essentially yeah. That's not that's not consumption. That's not food. You know what I mean? He's not going to run it's home torture. with this duck. Yeah, it's it's torture. It's 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 insane. That's like some Jeffrey Dahmer level shit. Like that's yeah. I, I'd hate to see what this son of a bitch has in his freezer. And I'm sure it's not just venison. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know. Like I said, I had a bunch of fucking comments to make, and I'm just yep. disheartened by this, and I'm good. I'm I'm all set. We can move on from this asshole anytime you want. Yeah, he's a, he is an absolute absolute piece of shit. So. Fuck that guy. He takes the winnings for uh, for the, easily for the year. You know, we'll uh, uh, contest contest. We didn't even know we were having. <laughs> I know. Imagine that. There you go. Jesus, that's that's freaking crazy. So let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's talk tournaments, man. What uh, do you want to do? You want to talk about this jigs and big stuff before we get into the chronic trips? Because registration yeah. is open. Yeah, registration is open for the jigs and bigs tournament. It is wide so open, gaping. Let's, you might say, let gaping. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> let's everyone get involved or as many folks as we can get involved in the jigs and bigs just to not think about the horrific things we just talked about exactly, right exactly. jigs and bigs tournament happy yep other shit not happy let's yep. let's get get involved we got a couple people already signed up i'm signed up i am it's me I, i'm gonna sign up tonight i'm actually you, you know you go ahead you you give the information i'm gonna sign up now okay yeah you can I'm sign do up the right now. Thing. go to go on the fishing chaos app download it if you don't have it just type in jigs and bigs j uh did i put it i forget did i use the uh you didn't use an ampersand? ampersand no no okay so jigs and bigs type it in september tournament it is freshwater multi-species i'm gonna go through this again because it seems like uh it seems like every chronic trips and every jigs and bigs there's always some questions that you know for the new folk yep you know they got to get used to it so every species that is listed has a point system and they're all the same point system the biggest fish that tur- that is turned in for that species is four points. The second biggest is three points. The third biggest is two points. The last, or anybody who turns one in is one point. If you do not turn a fish in in that category, you don't get a point. There is also an any five category. The any five category is a fish that have not been previously turned in in another category, mm-hmm. have not been culled, yep, or are of a species that is not listed in you know that doesn't have a category. Yep. So a little bit of strategy comes in with that where you want to turn in your longest, you know, um, I don't know. What's, what's a good species that's not listed on there? Oh, one that's not listed on there? Mm. Freshwater sturgeon. Yeah, there you you've go. Caught, you've caught a sturgeon. Well, Outside no, of Massachusetts. Be, yeah, <laughs> no, let's, leave stur- let's leave sturgeon out of it. Um, what's a good one? Carp. A cusk. No, a cusk because we have carp on there. Oh, we do have carp on here. Uh, yeah, we Pretty do. sure we do, yeah. Um, cusk. So you're up in the Midwest and you got a, a cusk and you catch one of those. Well, it's not listed anywhere. So go ahead and put that in the any five and it's a 25 incher, man. Good for you. You got a 25 inch cusk. It's in there. It's also right in there with a 20 inch Northern Pike because you already have a 26 inch Northern Pike in the Northern Pike category. 20 inch. You're very good. You got a 20 inch put it in the any five and you're still trying to compile, mm-hmm. um, lengths on that. But if you have a 19 inch largemouth and you call that largemouth out in the largemouth category with a 21 inch largemouth, that yep. 19 cannot be moved over to the any five. That thing's no. dead in the water. So when it comes to certain species and certain lengths, you might have some strategizing to do as to where you want to put those fish and where they're going to get you the most points. The total of all these points of all the fours, the threes, the twos and the ones is your score. And then we are doing Bobby. We're just going to streamline this. OK. Yeah, I like this idea. This is really this, good. And you, so I'm guessing you're reading the rules or you have read the rules? Well, I'm actually I'm looking for the lineup because we do have not, o- not only myself, but we have another angler who's entered. So there's a total of four right now. Holy shit. That's great. So, uh, yeah, here's how the prizes are going to go. We're going to keep this nice and simple. We're going to do first, second, third. Yep. We're going to do first to 100, first to 200, first to 300. If we get a certain amount of people, if we get more than 25 people, I'll put in a fourth and a fifth place. Yeah, that's cool. All right. I like that. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, that's cool. Because, you know, and here's the deal. eh? We discussed this last time we had this uh, this tournament. Um, I'm the the director, and I'm going to kind of play spoiler for everybody. So I'll be the bad guy on this. If I end up finishing in the top three or get to the first of the hundred or whatever, those prizes are not awarded to me. Yeah. 
they're just going to be divvied up amongst the the people that place. Yep. So we're not going to add a place just because I beat somebody out. But let's say I finish first, like I did last time. All right. If I finish first, my prize has got divvied, divvied up between what? Second and third, right? Yes. I that's how we worked it. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just playing spoiler. I'm having a little fun with this. And, uh, you know, you guys, this should make you guys strive to do better to keep me from being a Grinch and taking prizes. Definitely. You don't want me to be a Grinch. I don't want to be a Grinch. No, well, I do want to be a Grinch. Yeah. Nobody wants that shit. <laughs> nobody. All right. No. I got a theme song. Where's my theme you song? You got a theme. I got you, baby. You're all set. Let's go ahead and do this. <laughs> yes. Now I want to talk about standings because I have a theme song. Welcome to the beginning of the last week, the final week, the the penultimate. Is it the penultimate or is it the ultimate week? The penultimate? Penultimate, yeah. Penultimate. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm using, I think so. I'm using big words now. I'm, I'm all grown up. We are in chaotic trips. It is there is some shit going on. I think that's 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 an understatement. There's some shit going on. We got people in the salt. We got people in freshwater. This is just insane. It's good times. <clears throat> we had uh, we didn't have a lead change, but everybody but the lead just bounced around. We had a whole bunch of action this week, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with our leader, Jared Heath's killing it. It seems like every one of these tournaments, we always have one person that just jumps out and stays there. Mm -hmm. Jared Heath has done that this tournament. Every time you turn around, he's he's loading up on another fish. And as a matter of fact, I was doing the uh, the records today because Chronic Trips, we keep records. Yep. Um, per species, Jared Heath set three of them this week. Or not this week, this tournament. And, uh, and he is on the cusp of breaking 300. Yeah. Nobody's done that in a Chronic Trips. That's that's pretty awesome. That's crazy. That's it's huge. Crazy. Yeah. Fuck, fuck crazy talk. Yeah. So, uh, Jared, keep it up, man. Uh, lengthwise, he is at, right now, he is at 281. The record's 291. And the way he's going, he's got another week to break that. So, Jared, keep up the good work. Um, great job. Now, let's get to some fun stuff. Big surprise. Jerry Howes is in second, but he's tied. Shut with, up. With not a, not a surprise. When you say the word tie and it comes to chronic trips and jigs and bigs, who do you think of? Oh, I think of Nate Shagnon. Nate Shagnon is the tie master. Oh, <laughs> Nate Shagnon. <laughs> there he is. Nate Nate is uh, actually completing up a, a trip up to Maine. I think he went to Mesolonsky yep. to celebrate. Oh, they're going to yell at me for this, but I think they're celebrating John Ferreira's. It was his bachelor party. Um, oh, no kidding. He's getting married. Yep. Congrats to John and his wife, or future wife. Um, so they are both tied at 14. Good for them. Nate Nate caught up quite a bit. He, uh, he's been working a ton over the past couple months. Yes, and, yeah. Uh, he took advantage of his trip up to Mescalonsky. He got Mescalonsky. He got a pike on the board. He got smallmouth. He, he really did a good job. What else did he get? He got. He already had large mouth. He got a good size pickerel up there. I think he even got a rock bass for his sunfish. So good job, Nate. No, uh, Jerry. J I mean, Jerry at this point is synonymous with finishing second, first, second, or third in these tournaments. It's just crazy the way he gets out and hits every species. I mean, he just must carry a checklist in his pocket and just doesn't give a shit. Gets out there and does what he's got to do. Puts mustard on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Puts mustard on it. Eats it. So. uh third place we'll call it we'll call it third i guess i don't know whatever because they're tied for second we'll call this third there's nelson hanging out at 13. nelson is uh nelson's hanging out there because he's got first first place for flatfish he caught a fluke and first oh wait a minute that's got to get updated jared heath has another point holy shit did i fuck shit, that up jared heath killing jared it got a, son look at this me you know what i color coded these wrong so i do here's a little behind the scenes shit until next year I, uh, I color code my shit, first, second, third. They all got different colors. It helps me see things better. When you color code something wrong, it bones people out of points. It does. Which I just, which I just did. So let me, let, me, let me take a step back here. I'm going to color code these right. You guys are going to listen. Are you listening to me do this? Like, this is magic. This is how the magic happens. This is indeed significant I am magic. Significant. I'm making the donuts right now. All right. So let me update that score. Did that do anything? Oh my God! No, I just dropped Nelson a point. Doesn't matter. Okay, dropped Nelson a point and gave Jared another point. So Jared's got twenty six. I said twenty five. I am obviously a huge liar. 
My nose is growing as we speak. You son of a N bitch. Nelson's got 12. Nelson is, is, uh, has jumped into contention on the backs of some saltwater fishing he's done. He's got a uh, he's got a fluke and he's got a striper in there. Surprisingly enough, Jared also <laughs> has a striper in there, which is one of the records he said. He got a 39 and a half inch striper. So good for him. That's not bad at all, dude. No, that's a huge striper. It's so nice. Very, very good. Anytime you get towards that 40 inch mark, you're yeah. happy. Yeah, it's a good thing. So Nelson's hanging out in third, and then there's a tie for fourth between myself and Hooked Up North. Oh, you're tied up with Josh? Yeah, and well, you know, like I said, I've got a I've got a slew of bass events over the next Oh well, shit, there's only one week left in the tournament. I've got a bass event. Yeah, you do. <laughs> next I've actually got two bass events. Um so I'll be uh, I'll be seeing what I can do about bass, but I'm I'm not banking on no. any more multi species. This has been a bass month for me, and it kind of reflects that. Bycatch is bycatch, and that's where I thrive with these tournaments. If I can get them, great. Or if I just happen to be in Minnesota and sitting on pike, but that's fine. Yeah, I'm doing doing my thing, and wherever I land, I land. So myself and hooked up north are at eleven. After that, we've got newcomer Tom Scott at nine, Tim nice. O'Keefe at eight, Derek Ardio. Why is Dr. Bill involved now? Because I ran out of songs. I was like, fuck it. I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and give you Dr. Bill. Okay, ready? Yeah. And then we've got Derek Ardioli at six. <laughs> 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 what a tone change. Oh, my God. All right. Chris Speak is at five. Austin Carlson's at four. The Pendergrass tied at three. There should be a side bet on that. They're really, oh, die. yes, we should 100% do that. What do you want to do? <coughs> Is it possible we could bet Sarah's uh, pasta sauce? <laughs> Can we just do that? She probably right. won it by her. <laughs> All right, here's the bet. No matter which Pendergrass comes out on top, they have to give us pasta sauce. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's a fair bet. I think that's a fair bet. Uh. Yeah, and... And rounding off these scores is Dylan Barber with two. So um, as we mentioned, I think a week ago or two weeks ago, after the Old Glory Invitational, yeah, I have a bucket of plastics that I will be... Um, I think we did this to another... Did we do this for the Jigs and Bigs? I think we did. The think we first did. Jigs and Bigs. Yeah. Anybody who turned into fish is going to get a nice little prize pack from Stretching Lines Plastics. Thank you, Damien, for donating that. And um, we're going to get those out. So... Awesome. It's going to be great. That's, that's where we have for chronic trips. Yet another month of, of, uh, of well, multi-species ass kicking. Yeah. We've got the jigs and bigs coming up in September that you please go register for. And then the chronic trips will round off our competitive year with the multi-species tournaments for October. Yeah. So that'll give everybody the, 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 the fall top water bite and hopefully all the migrating stripers and whatnot and bluefish will, you know, that's, that's how you round your year off. That's not a bad way to go out. No, you know, not at all. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm fully planning on getting out and doing some fishing in, into November and early December, like I did last year, you know, I mean, you know, we'll play that by ear, but as far as the uh, competitive stuff goes, we're coming up toward the end of the season. Yeah. You are. know, it's like, this is, this is the time. So, I mean, by all means, go ahead and join. And the nice thing is if you pre-register for this jigs and bigs event, and then you pre-register for the October chronic trips, you're in there for the entire month. As soon as you can get out there, you're good to go. You know? Yes. And Bobby, you know what I did for this one? Remember we had discussed this as well, just to help get the prizes out a little more, yes. a little easier at the end on our end. Mm -hmm. um, I did limit the registration for the first three weeks, you can get in. I that saw last that. week, yeah. yeah, the last week, you know, you, you can't jump in. I mean, we, you know, uh, the, it's the very fees go for few. donations anyways, yeah. but it just helps us out to, to kind of get the prizes in because we don't want to, we don't want to wait till the end, go buy the prizes, and then somebody jumps in at the last week, minute. and then and yep. then there's money that could have gone either towards prizes or towards a donation. Exactly. So yeah, that's that's a really good point. Yeah, we're doing that, and there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yes, you and I had a discussion, and I sent out some feelers to some previous winners and oh. some people that tend to finish high in yep. these, these – uh, high. <laughs> Fuck me running. Um, that tend to finish in the money on these tournaments, and um, we've been doing gear. We've been buying gear for folks. Well, we're going to move it over to some gift cards. 
We're going to let you guys buy your own gear. Or the giant wad of bills that Bobby Roast Beef just held up. They're all ones. I don't want to they know are, how you yeah. earn those. Um, just because they came from my underwear. You leave me alone, man. Go go get tested. Um, so <laughs> we're going to go with gift cards. More than likely to Old Glory. Uh, I think that's probably the best idea, hey, can right? Can you test you, these for trace w- elements of cocaine and, and, and taint? <laughs> God, there's a little bit of cocaine on this one, but there's so much taint. There's so much taint. Um, <laughs> this one is covered in grundle. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do some gift cards, probably to Old Glory, because that way people around the country, if they want to purchase online, they can just go right to Old Glory, uh, oldglory.com and do their thing. Yeah. I think that's the way to do it. And don't forget to use that Jigs and Bigs promo code either. Get the most right. out of that damn gift card. Damn it. You're damn right. And if you do happen to call ahead to see if there's something in stock, yep. make sure you're not on speakerphone. That's yeah, make sure you're not on speakerphone. <laughs> make sure. Well, that's all I got, dude. No, I, I, I think that's that's really great. This was, uh, this was a pretty good segment. I'm glad we got the, the duck fucker stuff out of the way and then did the tournament stuff to kind of cleanse the palate. I think that was that was a classy move. Duck fucker's a piece of shit. Duck fucker is a piece of shit. Fuck that duck fucker. Yep. Fuck that duck hooker. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. All right, guys. We're going to take a short break. We got a quick message from our good friends at uh, at Three Bells Outfitters. Remember, guys, if you're looking for a new kayak, maybe you're, maybe you're, maybe you're into paddleboard fishing now. That's one of the things uh, that Elise was telling me about. Like, she really enjoyed getting out there on her inflatable paddleboard and doing her thing. And I said, oh, good. That's, that's awesome. Did I did I ever tell you we have a we have a convertible one? Yeah, you it, did. Uh, what, what when you say convertible, what does that mean? So it's a native. It's a, not a native. It's a, a Liquid Logic Versa mm-hmm. board. So it's the same umbrella company that Native is made from. Right? Gotcha. So Liquid Logic, Native, and Bonafide are all made from the same same company. Uh huh. So it's a paddle board, but it has this big circular thing on it that you can. I have a seat that you actually put right on it and just clip it right on. So if I wanted to, I could just put the seat in and paddle that way. No kidding. Yeah. I I have seen people take like paddle boards and put like almost like a cooler on them and just sit and paddle and fish that way. I'm like. New new canoe users do that all the time. Um, This this is one of the native style stadium seats. They're great. No kidding. Huh. Yeah. Well, I, cool. I've never used it that way. I've always used it as a paddleboard because if I want to sit, I have a kayak. Well, and that's what she was telling me. She's like, I, I really kind of liked it. It was a lot of fun. It was nice. She goes, not to have to lug. I'm not sure what she's got for a canoe or for a canoe because that's a lifestyle. But um, I'm not sure <laughs> what she has for a kayak, but she says the same thing. She's like, yeah, she's like, it was one thing when I had a pickup truck, I could just throw the, the, the son of a bitch in there and I'd be good to go. She's like, it's a little bit more tedious to like put the kayak together. She's like, with the paddleboard, I could just go and like deflate it you know and then inflate it when i get where i am and i'm good to go i was like that's pretty cool that's awesome but yeah she was catching fish on it and everything i'm like go you that's awesome home run that's huge so yeah we've got uh anyway you you know check that but if you if you if you're in the market for a new kayak and judging by some of the stuff we've seen from icast like there's some pretty cool stuff coming out um and uh three bells will have you covered uh for a lot of that stuff rigging and all that stuff so go ahead get yourself rigged up and ready to go and we'll see you guys in a bit right after this Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce that we're being supported by Three Bells Outfitters. Located in Smith Cove on the Niantic River, TBO is Connecticut's premier paddle sports retailer. They're a full service shop specializing in kayaks and paddle boards for everything from recreation to tournament fishing. Three Bells is an authorized dealer of Hobie, Jackson, Feel Free, Native, and Bonafide kayaks, as well as many paddle board brands. Not sure of what kind of SUP or kayak you want? TBO offers free demos of all brands. Want to go for an extended test drive? They have a full service rental facility on site. Three Bells also offers a complete rigging service for your kayak with such brands as Yak Attack, Yak Gear, Burley Pro, Yak Power, Torquedo, and more. The sky is the limit. You can visit Three Bells Outfitters in person or online at threebellsoutfitters.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or order online and pick up at the store. Can't make it to the store to pick up your kayak or worried the freight company might 
might damage your purchase? Three Bells Outfitters offers a white glove delivery of kayaks within a 225 mile radius of their store at a rate less than typical freight carriers. They will deliver your kayak, set it up, and answer any questions you may have. Be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to tell them Jigs and Big sent you Three Bells Outfitters because life is better on the water. It's about time to wrap things up on the old Sunday Night Live. We're coming in on uh, 10 o'clock now. And uh, we had one hell of a show. Talk about an emotional ride of uh, of ups and downs this whole time. All of it. We, we, we heard about uh, me taking trivia out on the salt uh, for the first time with uh, a bunch of drunken sailors. Uh, you heard about uh, the, the highs and lows I had fishing this week, at, this week anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we got a little bit of insight as to how much of a, a wild card it can be when you're pre-fishing uh, as, uh, on, the, on the welcome mat of a tropical storm. It gets pretty crazy. And then, of course, you know, we talked about all kinds of great stuff regarding, um, you know, getting started with bass fishing if you're a, a newbie, a beginner, you know. This portion of the show, I want to ask a question. Fire away. I think this is definitely the appropriate section of the show. We're yeah. on our way out. You and I don't give a fuck right now. Did you, were, you, were you aware that a few years ago there was a, a whole <sighs> subgenre of heavy metal that, that came up around pirates? Yes. All right. Did you get into that at all? I know. That was like, oh, okay. for a second, I was like, cool. <laughs> Just, that was it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I did get into that. And I found one of, I, you know, I found a, a favorite amongst the genre, the subgenre. Uh, I believe they're from New Jersey. Their name is Swashbuckle. They dress like fucking pirates. They are phenomenal. They play thrash metal. The vocalist slash bassist is a rather large gentleman that makes you look svelte. All right. He's a big dude. Uh-huh. And he he comes out dressed up like a pirate with a <laughs> fucking, I don't know, stuffed animal parrot on his shoulder and yells and screams and does his thing. And this is probably about 10 years ago. And it was phenomenal. I loved going. I saw Swashbuckle like three times. I got their shirt. I got another shirt on that says just the crotch rot, which is just phenomenal to own. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one show. I, it was a, I think it was one of the New England uh, metal and hardcore festivals. Yes. Okay. And it was upstairs at the Palladium. They had just played. I'm like, this is great. And the we just go what on. F- what was that? Uh, as you're talking, I'm preparing something. Okay. Yeah. Well, as they had finished up, uh, they had finished up their set, and I think Municipal Waste was playing. <laughs> that guy, the vocalist, came in, uh, into the crowd and watched Municipal Waste right in front of me, and I was so ready. I just didn't have the heart. I'm like, I almost wanted to ask him if he wanted to sit on my shoulder so he could see. <laughs> I can only imagine oh. the response, but I, I didn't do it. <laughs> so, but no, hey, there you go. Swashbuckle exists. And uh, if you're really bored and in a thrash metal, jump on some swashbuckle. Oh, they were good shit. Swashbuckle. So it's, it's funny that you say that. So I want to... I want to uh, end the show on a different song tonight than uh, our typical um, shake and bake, if if you will. Um, this song, there is you, you mentioned pirate pirate heavy metal, and yes. uh, I had um, well, there was there's a, a band, a, a Western Massachusetts hardcore band that uh, was pirate hardcore in the late '90s called Scurvy. That was the name of the group. Yeah, I remember Scurvy. You remember Scurvy. Okay. And we're going to end the show tonight with the Grog song. Okay. <laughs> that's what we're going to end the show with. I just got to track it down. That's that's the only issue. Uh, the reason I even brought that up was I think this title, the, the, the title of this show should just simply be Bobby Roast Beef Gets Scurvy and just leave it at that. No other description, no nothing. People are like, what the fuck? I'm not against that. I am not against... Oh, it won't let me, let me download the track. Right, I'm going to have to find this somewhere, but... Yeah, that's my goal. I'm going to try to try to try to get this together. One thing that we should alert the listeners to that uh, you know seems to happen every now and again. We slip it in there. We slip it in there just like the tip. Yeah, we do. 
They, there's sometimes Easter eggs that after our whatever playout song. You might want to listen through to the end of the episode because last was it last week or the week prior, we, we slipped an Easter egg in and the originator of the Easter egg didn't even listen to it. I had to call that person and say, did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. And he said, what are you talking about? And then there was much laughter. But they're in there. Find them. We oh, do yeah. these things. We're snazzy. No, we are. We're, we're pretty... Uh... I don't even know the right way to go ahead and uh, and, and word it, but we're we're something. We're, we're pretty we're we're pretty Easter eggish. <laughs> we really we are very Easter eggy. So yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Um, one thing I do want to mention, and and I've mentioned this before, and I actually I just put a, a commercial spot together to run in uh, in trivial earlier today. <clears throat> is um I get I I have a lot of people who come and who haven't seen me in a while and they're just like holy crap man dude you grew like this crazy like Grizzly Adams beard and stuff and you know it gets pretty unruly but I went to go see my barber and she kind of gave me a nice lineup got me all set cleaned things up nice but uh it's it's so funny man this time more than any other my wife hasn't complained about my beard at all like not at all um couldn't couldn't even believe like that that's the situation and i attribute a whole lot of it to the new products that i've been using um i've been utilizing this stuff from this company called live bearded and uh so a while like probably like three months ago i had i had ordered something from live bearded because i saw an ad on instagram um the gram got to me and i ordered something off of an ad that i saw on instagram and what it was it was a, a six cent sampler and in this sampler they had a beard wash beard conditioner uh, a beard oil and, and what they call beard butter it's like a beard balm type thing for styling and um the nice thing is all their products are 100 natural they're all natural products they don't weigh any weigh your beard down or anything they don't get crusty it's, it's really really nice and a healthy beard is a better looking beard that's the whole deal and i started using these i found a couple of scents that i really like and i started working for them as an ambassador you know just sharing things here and there and i've got a promo code so if anybody wants to check this stuff out um i'm going to show you guys i use this this is the beard oil one of the scents i really like it's called Ameri it's it, the scent is american it's by american. Li uh, live bearded and this one here american is basically a mix of cedar uh vet vetiver and uh bergamot so it's very like woodsy you know they have some others that incorporate like vanilla and things like that they kind of change things up but the scent lasts all day i had what's nice is that all their products you can match the scent or you can mix them up if you wanted and you can do like a subscribe and save where you'll save a little bit of money but you can set if you want to get you know like a bottle of beard oil every single month or if you want it to be every other month or something like that so this way you don't ever run out but what's nice about the beard oil is it absorbs absorbs so much better than any other beard oil I've ever used. And the thing is with beard oil, it's not really for the hair as much as it is for the skin underneath. You know, so it's been it's kind of been a game changer. They do um a bar soap that matches the scent. Uh and they also now they just started doing deodorants too, which is all brand new. So I'm like that's pretty cool. And the nice thing is is that it is it's all natural. So you're not filling your pores or getting like any kind of like chemicals or anything. You know, the I, I love when I try a beard oil and it's sticky. It shouldn't be that way. This stuff is not that way. So I've been loving it. The code is roast beef at checkout. It saves you 10%. And if you do one of those subscribe and saves or, or you order frequently, you can use that code over and over and over again and save yourself 10% every single time. So it's pretty helpful, pretty cool. Uh, I, I hope you guys, you know, if, if you don't have a beard, maybe you know somebody that does or, you know, maybe you're married to somebody who has a beard and you're just like, God, I wish they would take care of that son of a bitch. This is this will make the difference. And you would recommend it to me. I'm I'm getting a little beardy. I'm you're not getting, getting a little I'm beardy. not going with a full beard. You're I'm not a with beardo that, yet, but yeah. That shadow shit. Well, no, we know what happens when I get full bearded. I get accused of things. We don't want that. So uh the wife is happy with this this, this she likes the shadow. Slightly more than the five o'clock shadow, I guess. Yep. She's happy with that. I keep more of a. You. I slept in front of a dumpster on a Memorial Drive Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. Yeah, I mean, I like can't that. say I haven't done that, yeah. but I have. Yeah, well, we all have. We've, we've, <laughs> we're we're very familiar with some chicken ah, shit. Moon's so, over uh, my hammy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
You had recommended to me. What were you recommending to me? You said there was a specific product I should be jumping on because I'm getting a little beardy. What was it, it? Some sort of face oil or some sort of... So it's definitely... I, I think if, if, if somebody were to go and buy one product for their beard... Um, no matter the length, like, cause it is, it's more about the skin. It's beard oil. Beard oil is imperative. You get up in the morning. And the first thing I do, if I'm not going to jump in the shower first thing and use the, the beard wash and conditioner and all that stuff, what I usually do first thing in the morning is I go and I, I, I soak my beard as much as I can. I just get as damp as I can. I comb it out. Right. And then I just add like maybe like a, a nickel to a quarter size amount of oil. And I, that's just because I've got a lot of hair for you. I'd use like a dime size circle. You know, a little bit of oil, rub it into your hands, and then massage it through the hair and get down into the skin. And then just use a comb and brush it, you know, and comb it all out to incorporate it all around. But the way it absorbs in and gets all collected, it's just like, it, it's awesome. It, it, you know, it's such a good thing for the health of your beard. The other thing that I think is amazing, like the beard wash and the beard conditioner is a great foundation. But the other one, if you have a beard where you need to style it a little bit, is this uh, this beard butter, the Live Bearded. Uh, their beard butter is out of this world. It smells great. Um, it's it's in a solid form, but once you have it in your hands, it melts right down. And I use this on my. I take like a dab and I put each on my on my mustache too. When I and I just kind of style my mustache that way, and it works out. This is when we record these. This is a terrible representation. I'll do my beard up nice one of these days. But like <laughs> when I do, when I'm out for like trivia and stuff like that, and it's all done up, it's really nice. Like you guys get me here on this live stream, and I, I'm like, you know, I I woke up this morning and I put the beard oil in, but that's all I did, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but we gotta, we, people got to see when you're pretty. Yeah, well, let me put on the nice shirt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excellent. And then and then Jay jumps in and says, "Dabs are great." <laughs> yeah. So so you would not suggest putting the beard oil in your hands and then sticking your hands into a fucking ceiling fan for application. I mean, if you're in a room full of bearded men who are looking to get uh, <laughs> beard oil facials, then maybe that's a good way Just, to like think about it as like a beard car wash almost. The the important thing is to not have. Yeah, you know, a dab of beard butter in one hand, and either Michelob or no, it wasn't even Michelob. I think it was Old Milwaukee oh, at the time. A can of that, that or is some Chinese, Chinese shit. food. No, yeah. if it was Chickabee shit, it'd be some Ballantine. That's what that would be. Uh, I like Ballantine. Miller Lite. Oh, uh, I got the yeah. wife is texting me right now. Bring up TP when you come upstairs. She says. <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys a quick guess of where the fuck my wife is hanging out right now. I think we should end the show as soon as possible I think we so you should. don't get in trouble. I think that's a good idea. Guys, uh, have yourselves a great week, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out the show. I really appreciate it. Remember, you can always check out Trivial. We're going to have Sean over there, too. He's going to do some geeky stuff with us. But we're going to, I mean, we're going to, when I say we're going to do some geeky shit, we're going to go and, and, and get, like, we're going deep with the, geek, the geekdom. It's going to be out of this it's world. Not just the tip. No. no, it's going to be the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. We're Balls going. Balls deep. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. I mean, you know, this is just awesome. It's, uh, we got another great week of Chronic Trips goodness, and then uh, September's coming up soon. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be Labor Day before you know it. It really is. Man, this summer's going by too damn fast. But that means we get into fall fishing, and fall fishing is always fun. So it's going to be great stuff, everybody. Go out there, catch some fish. Have yourselves a great one. We will see you next time for some more uh, good stuff from your good friends here at Jigs and Bigs. Guys, have yourselves a good one. Take good care of yourselves. See you later, and tight lines.